where entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. Funny you talking about rock stars. Over the weekend, every time I turn on TikTok a couple dozen different times, there you are with your cowboy hat on or your crocodile Dundee hat on singing a double went down to Georgia Biden parody and hundreds of thousands of likes and at least two, three dozen duets. So congrats, like uh, like Guitar Hero, you have reached rock star, rock god status. Wow, that's Donald exciting. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans knew? represent an <laughs> extremism that threatens the very foundation from this. of our republic. Joe Biden went down to Philly. He had something he wanted to say. He was in a bind. His team was way behind, and it was coming on Election Day. So he stood in front of a podium underneath the late summer skies, started reading the teleprompter and repeating his favorite lies. He looked like a snake oil salesman when he stood up on his stump, saying the greatest threat to our democracy is mean old Donald Trump. Now, half y'all out there is pretty damn extreme, and if you think that you can beat us, you're going to need an F-15. Then he said, we've got a choice to make come election day. Are you going to vote for Democrats or for the good old USA? MAGA, get your red hats on. It's time to take a stand. We've got to beat the Democrats and impeach old Brandon. And if we win, we get to make our country great again. But if we lose, we're stuck with Joe Biden. Mark, you crazy. I love this oh. show. Too, and that's why we keep that's why we keep coming back because we're gluttons for punishment. What's up? This is the Marque Show. My name is Marque. Thank you so much for that lovely open mic and those nice sentiments. We appreciate everybody who sends us open mic messages, especially today, because today is whatever you want Wednesday and whatever you want to talk about, we're gonna talk about today. Whether you want to talk about me reaching rock star status, have at it. Whether you want to talk about Joe Biden and his speech, whether you want to talk about the view being back with a quote unquote conservative, whether you want to talk about Kathy Griffin starting a civil war or at least uh, promoting the start of a civil war after the uh, the November election. Or if you know what, you may just want to talk, there may be something else on your mind. You may just want to call in and say, God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the light. Wait, no, through the night with a light from above. See, I know I know the song. It's one of my faves. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. If you're trying to get through, a lot of people were uh, writing in and, and sending messages about what uh, something Joe Biden said yesterday, a new name that he came up for the uh, with for the MAGA resistance. The biggest contrast from what MAGA Republicans, the extreme right, the 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 Trumpies yeah, the Trumpies. And we had a lot of fun with it yesterday, but it seems like the one thing the Democrats never seem to remember is whenever they come up with a derogatory term for the Republican Party, whether it's the basket full of deplorables, whether it's the ultra MAGA, whether it's the extreme ultra MAGA, whether it's the Trumpies, whatever they come up with, it just becomes a clarion call. It just becomes a it just becomes a, a tent that we all pile under. It just becomes a call to arms, if you will. And it's uh, something that's happened again, too. Everybody excited, excited to be a Trumpy. I'd rather be a Trumpy than a Bidafile. You know, what does that mean when you look at, when you do look at the alternatives, when you do look at the alternatives, it's, uh, it's really a no-brainer. And speaking of no-brainers, we got tons of information about Joe Biden and his campaign. Oh, also, and again, I'm not picking on a guy who just had a stroke, but the guy just had a stroke. And these people keep putting him out there to stump for the Senate seat in Pennsylvania. You have to, t listen, you gotta, you gotta sit back and ask yourself, what is wrong with these liberal women? What is, if there's any liberal women out there, question for you, what the hell is wrong with you people? Liberal women just don't care about their husbands. Liberal women just don't care about uh, the men in their lives. For example, Jill Biden sees that, I mean, she's a doctor of education. I understand that. But clearly, she's a well-educated woman. She sees what's going on with Joe Biden. If you're a, if you're a doctor of education and you see your husband not, in, not even able to put together simple phrases and words on a stage. You know how much I'm going to do with the deficit this year? Yeah. If you hear him say he's going to prick our troops. God bless you all and may God prick our troops. If you hear all of that... 
as a as a loving and concerned spouse, as a woman who is who is you know sworn to stand by her husband in sickness and in health, hell, as a decent human being, you would not let this guy go through these tumultuous activities. You would not let this guy pretend to be president of the United States. And as an American, you do have a duty to put your country above your own personal interests and the personal interests of your husband. Uh, but Jill Biden doesn't do that. Liberal women don't do that. They go, you know what? Yeah, it's just a couple more years. Go out there, Joe. I'll be waiting here to hold your hand and drag you off stage when you're all done. Don't worry if you forget your mask. I'll bring it to you. Don't worry if you say something stupid. We'll just have Corinne Jean-Pierre say something even more stupid in the press briefing, and everyone will forget that you even exist. And the same is happening with John Fetterman. This John Fetterman guy, I don't know who's in charge with him. I've seen his wife on the videos. I saw her in the hospital room. Very attractive young woman. Seems like they seem like a cute couple. But she should not let her husband continue in this manner if she loved her husband she'd be like baby your brain is is recovering from a stroke your brain had a massive hemorrhage you are not firing on all cylinders you can barely put together a sentence let alone represent the people of pennsylvania in the united states senate and this is something that maybe you should call it quits for if you're spending the the day you win the primary if you spend that night in the hospital with a stroke and you have to take weeks and weeks and weeks off of campaigning and then when you get back out there you start well you start sounding like this please understand the stakes in this race send me to washington dc to send so i can work with senator casey and i can champion the union way of life in Jersey, in, excuse me, in D.C. In Jersey, he wants to go to, he wants you to send him to Jersey, Pennsylvania. Send him, I send me to Washington, New Jersey, because it's not, it's a much closer trip. It's the, the next state over, but he's, he's getting all confused. He can't, he can't remember where Washington is. He can't remember the difference between New Jersey and the District of Columbia, and yet he's standing up there begging for your vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's an honor. I live eight minutes away from here, and when I leave tonight, I got three miles away, Dr. Oz in his mansion in New Jersey. You've got a friend and you have an ally. Send me to Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I guess. I guess when you finally get to a good stopping point, you're like, uh, send me to Washington, D.C. Thank you, Steve. Workers, goodbye. But he's out there, can't remember where he is, stuttering over his words, stumbling. He's got those big Biden-esque pauses, and he wants people to send him to Washington, New Jersey, so he can go represent uh, Pennsylvania Stein or whatever or whatever state he thinks he he lives. And then he's talking about uh, he's talking about Dr. Oz living in off in New Jersey. You know, I was never a big fan of Dr. Oz to begin with, but I've heard Dr. Oz speak, and the man can still speak clearly. Uh, I've heard, I'm never a big fan of Dr. Oz to begin with, and I know he's not doing well in the polls up there, but I at least think if you're in Pennsylvania and you're sending somebody to the United States Senate on your behalf, and you only get two of those, it's not like the, Repre it's not like the House of Representatives where you got like two dozen, uh-uh, you have two people, but that's it, every state gets two of them for six years. You're telling me that John Fetterman today is going to be able to serve the people of Pennsylvania for six years after suffering a stroke and not being able to differentiate between Washington, D.C. and New Jersey. I've been, I've lived in both, by the way. I lived in New Jersey. I lived in Washington. They are very different places. They are very, very, a lot of criminals in both places, but they're just, you're different kind of criminals. In, you can, in New Jersey, it's easy to figure out who the criminals are. In D.C., uh, it's a little more a little more difficult. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. But look, that's up to Pennsylvania. I have, no, I have no dog in that fight. I will say there is a dog fight that I have a couple of dogs in. One of them is Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton, it, you better be ready for it because she's coming back. You know, we said a long time ago, Hillary Clinton will be the nominee for president uh, for the Democrat Party in 2024. It's not going to be Joe Biden. We all know, we all, it's clear that it's not going to be Joe Biden. As I said yesterday, that speech Joe Biden gave is, I think, his final, it's one of the last speeches he's going to give. They sent him out there to fall on his sword. They said, look, you got to go out there and tell everybody that MAGA Republicans are a threat to democracy. And yes, it'll hurt your chances politically, and you're going to become a joke, an even bigger joke than you are. You're going to become a meme. People are going to meme you for the rest of your life life this is the only image people are going to remember is you looking like bielza biden standing in front of the demonic background chastising half of the country and calling them extremists 
That's all anyone's going to remember of you, but you got to do it because we need to salvage the midterms. And don't worry about 2024. We'll find somebody else. And it's not going to be Joe. It's going to be Hillary Clinton. And we know this because guess who's back? Hillary Clinton. She is making the rounds, man. She has a massive media tour. And it just so happens to coincide with this Donald Trump raid at Mar-a-Lago and all the documents that are being uh, brought out and, and the special uh, master that's now going to review all the documents. And right before the midterms, you've got Hillary Clinton, who is coming back to save the Democrat Party. And she started by dragging Chelsea onto the late show with, or the Tonight Show, rather, with Jimmy Fallon. Listen to how they started off their conversation. Since you both have uh, lived at the White House. Yes, we did. Yes. How, how easy is it to walk out with boxes of classified documents? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, that's a funny joke. That's good. She got, Hillary Clinton got a good laugh. By the way, she cackles a lot like Kamala. I don't know who cackled first. Was it Kamala or Hillary? I think Hillary's a lot older. So maybe Hillary started the cackle and Kamala cackled after. Uh, you know, cackle back, y'all. We're going to I mean, that's a new game. We should get a bunch of cackles and try to figure out which cackle is it, Hillary or Kamala. <laughs> Hillary or Harris? Who's cackling harder? Uh, but Hillary Clinton, she's out there cackling about the, this is, and I want you to realize, the Democrat Party, Joe Biden, and Adam Schiff, and Nancy Pelosi, and Merrick Garland, and the Department of Justice, and the FBI, and all the news networks that are liberal, which is the majority of them, they're all telling you that this is the crime of the century, what Donald Trump did. Donald Trump put our entire nation in jeopardy. Donald Trump should be locked up, the key should be thrown away, and then we should go find the key and throw it away even further, and then burn it and then bury it, and then put it on a SpaceX rocket to Mars. That's what we should do with the key, So, because Don Donald Trump is the most heinous criminal ever. That's what they want you to believe. The DOJ wants you to think he has nuclear codes and nuclear secrets that he's going to sell to the highest bidder. And, uh, and here's Hillary Clinton on Jimmy Fallon laughing hysterically about what's supposed to be the crime of the century. Since you both have uh, lived at the White House. Yes, we did. Yes. How, how easy is it to walk out with boxes of classified documents? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how wonderful. Do, is that the way you react when you're joking or when you're laughing about the, uh, you're talking about the crime of the century, the most heinous political scandal ever? It's really interesting. Doesn't seem to me like they're taking it all that seriously. How about, you know, Jimmy Fallon? He had another good question for Hillary Clinton. Listen to her answer. Is it for the presidential library? <laughs> <laughs> well, usually when it comes to presidential libraries. Yeah. Everything is in the archives. We have a national archive. No and kidding. We have a national archive? Why? Like, we didn't all see National Treasure 20 times. Record administration, where everything goes, and then it gets transferred to um, a presidential library. Mm, At least yeah. that's the way it used to happen. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now he's got his own stash in his basement. I, I, yeah, I, I, I guess. I mean, that's what we're finding out. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, it's Florida. There's no basements in Florida. If you start digging into the ground in Florida, you hit water. So it's a storage room of some kind, maybe like a maybe like a pod. I don't know. I don't know what the storage facilities are like in Mar-a-Lago. Probably a lot nicer than the rest of ours. But it's not. Uh, it's not in the basement. So they're out there just yucking it up, man. They're out there. A uh, one minute, Hillary Clinton wants you to believe that this is a seditious conspiracy, and I know that because later that same day, or I guess earlier, that's I don't know when they tape. They taped one show. They taped them both. Doesn't matter. She's over on CBS with Nora O'Donnell saying that this is the worst thing to ever happen to the United States of America. I would not be honest if I didn't say I think there was a seditious conspiracy against the government of the United States, and that's a crime. And that's a crime. So January 6th was a seditious conspiracy against the United States of America. That's a crime. Donald Trump, this mastermind, took 15 boxes of highly classified secrets out of the White House, and that's a crime. And I'm going to go on national television one minute and say this is a seditious conspiracy, and then later that night... That's my doctor. <laughs> I'm just going to yuck it up with my old pal, Jimmy Fallon, old Jay Fell. And I'll tell you what, the reason this is happening, the reason she's on CBS with Nora O'Donnell, the reason she's on Dim Jimmy Fallon, and yes, the reason she's on The View today uh, is because Hillary Clinton's coming back. She may tell you she's not. In fact, they asked her the question, will you run for president again? And her answer may shock and surprise you.
or it may not. I'll play it for you right after this. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Quick break. More Mark K Show on the way. Guys, Hannah wanted you to know that she's on the stream today and she's going to be checking in everywhere except for Rumble. She'll be checking in on all the streams except for Rumble because uh, she hates Rumble. Also, my Facebook. Oh, there we go. My Facebook better. My Facebook was all locked up. Mark will not play next. Susie is next. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff knows the whole rundown of the show. Mark just lied. He's not going to play Hillary Clinton next. He's playing Susie from Middleburg next. Well, I ask you, who would you rather hear from? Susie from Middleburg, Hillary Clinton. Um, can't a hole just open up? Shut up, Mark. Kelly J. Johnson. What? What did I say? Oh, about Hannah. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Hannah doesn't rumble. That's true. Hannah no rumble. Hannah twitches, though. <laughs> Hi, Hannah. So yeah, we are back on YouTube. We should probably turn YouTube off. Why are you guys all back on YouTube? Is Karen there? Probably. She already called. Where is Hannah? I don't see her anywhere, by the way. I don't think she's watching. Wasn't she supposed to watch? Didn't we tell her, yes, you can work from home as long as you watch the stream and take notes? I feel like that was the deal. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, <hope> Siri. So. <laughs> FaceTime Hannah. Because I'm Which hoping one? she's keeping the Hannah log. Gick or Hannah Gile? Hannah Gick. Making a FaceTime call now. Hi. Aren't you supposed to be on the stream? I am on the stream. I literally commented on Rumble and on Facebook. Oh, why are you on Rumble? Because I love Rumble, unlike you say I do. Unlike I say you... Okay, that, that was interesting. Uh, how's it going? Fantastic. Okay, good. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I'm you're, better. You're better? Okay, good. Well, that's good. You look good. Thanks, I put on makeup. Yeah, why are your eyes closed in this photo, by the way? I wasn't planning on you using it, that's why. <laughs> okay, all right, great. <laughs> I was um, just sending you a picture showing you that I was like, you know. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Uh, all right, is there anything you wanted to say to everybody before uh, before we continue? Yes, I love you all, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. That's funny. Uh <clears throat> Mark is such a brat. <laughs> uh, hi, Hannah. You okay? She looks fine. Also, yeah, how she looks perfectly fine. I don't know what I. Don't, I think I think it's all fake news. When I'm sick, I look dis I look horrible, right? Don't you look horrible when you're sick? I look terrible. I got like the bags under my eyes, and I'm all like sniffly, and my nose is red, and I'm like spewing blood, and I always I, have a bad attitude. Yeah, a bad attitude, and she's just. I don't think I. I don't know about this whole. I think it's a. I think it's a joke. Mark, you were a jerk. What did I do? <laughs> How rude, Mark. <laughs> well, she's got uh, PTO she's got to use, doesn't she? Oh, is that what it is? I don't know. Use it or lose it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have any PTO yet. Well, uh, how long until we come back? 45 seconds. Okay. Hey, Siri, FaceTime Hannah Geik. <laughs> Making a FaceTime call to Hannah Gick. Oh, Gick. Sorry. Gick. <laughs> what? Hang on, we're gonna hang on, we're gonna go we're gonna go live in uh, forty five seconds. What? Am I gonna be on there? Yeah, you're gonna be on here. Just sit right here. Just relax. <laughs> Great. Don't say anything though until I talk to you. 
Don't speak until you're spoken to. <laughs> no, I guess I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Fine, that's all I've been wait, waiting three years for her to understand. <clears throat> Here we go. All right. I'm a Trumpy, I'm a Trumpy, I'm a Trumpy through and through, and he'll be back in 24 with the help of me and you. That was actually written by my cousin, so I can't take credit. But I noticed you didn't give your cousin any credit either, because we didn't get a name or anything. Listen, speaking of people who aren't going to be back till 2024, uh, Hannah's on the phone with us. She's at home still for day two. Hannah, how are you? Oh, I feel lovely. Do you feel any better at all? I actually feel a lot better. My fever finally broke this morning. Oh, good. Okay, all right. And uh, do, what what about your other symptoms? Are they clearing up? Yeah, they gave me a lot of medicine and a lot of fluids. Yeah. Who's they? Oh, uh, the ER. You went to the ER? Yeah. Why did you go to the ER? Because uh, we, my family has like pancreas problems and like gallbladder problems and they were making sure it wasn't that. Uh, but it turns out that the sharp pains I was getting was severe dehydration and really low potassium. Oh, too much meat and alcohol. No, no, not too much alcohol. Definitely not. Um, but no, I have to stick to leaner meat. Okay, yeah, you got to uh, eat some bananas too. All right, so when are you going to be back? Tomorrow. Oh, what? Yeah. All right, well, we'll see about that. Hey, uh, take care of yourself. In the meantime, uh, we have someone else we need to chat with quickly. It's Susie in Middleburg. Hi, Susie. How are you? I'm doing real good. How about yourself? Doing swell, Susie. Uh, what's going on today? What do you want to say? Well, I wanted to say get well soon to Hannah. I know. We're, we're all thinking, well, hopefully she will be back tomorrow. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Uh, she'll have some bananas and, you know, drink a lot of water and she'll be good to go. What else is on your mind today, Susie? I, I uh, um, have finally found my calling. What is it? I'm a Trumpy. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> good perf. I just could have figured that one out. <laughs> and what do Trumpies uh, say today, Susie? It's Trump Day! Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Susie, thank you so much for calling. Quick break, folks. We'll be right back. Good job, Anna. All right, coming back with Hillary Clinton this time. Not a lie, actually happening. Ugh. <clears throat> Guys, did you see Phil and Hannah? Since Hannah's out sick, we thought we would just have Carol fill in. Carol, say something Hannah would say. Uh, Mark, Mark, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you got the job. <laughs> oh, my God, that was... Oh, so perfect. Okay. Oof. Guys, great. I know, Galen, wasn't that a great impression? That was so good. La, 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 la. Hey, Garth in Nevada, if you're listening, Nevada, pardon me, Garth in Nevada, if you're listening, hang tight. We're going to get to you first after the break. I hope he's listening. Let Garth know he'll be first right out of the break. So to hang on, because I definitely want to talk to him and uh, everyone else we'll get to in just a minute. Oh, Car <laughs> that was Carol. She's calling. <laughs> uh, nope. Sorry. Tell Carol it's too late. No credit. Oh, 
Oh, so by the way, a friend of mine is on the uh, is on the uh, steak and eggs diet, and I said, "What's the steak and eggs diet?" And he said, "You eat nothing but steak and eggs twice a day, and you lose a lot of weight." And I go, "Oh my God, that sounds amazing!" And then my wife goes, "That's literally the diet Hannah's on." And I go, no, she's on the carnivore diet. And she goes, what's the difference? She eats steak, she eats eggs, she's she. I go, I don't know. The steak and eggs one just seems a lot more enticing to me. Like yeah. if I could have, you're supposed to have a pound of steak and three eggs for lunch, a pound of steak and three eggs for dinner, nothing else all day except for water. Hmm. And they say if you do that for like four weeks, you just burn, like the fat just melts away. And then my wife's like, that's exactly what Hannah's doing. I go, Hannah eats pork chicken rinds, and, yeah. chicken, she eats, like, blue cheese, and... Steak sounds much more appealing to me. Yeah, steak and eggs? I'm mm -hmm. all about that, man. Mm -hmm. I'll literally have for uh, lunch three eggs. Yeah. I'll just fry up three eggs, throw some hot sauce on that, I'm good to go. Give me a filet. Mm. Throw a little filet on that, that's so good. Mm -hmm. Now I want some steak and eggs. Great. Thanks, me. <laughs> Can afford steak yeah that well that is the other thing too it's expensive yeah. i guess because steak is very choice uh expensive you'd have to use some kind of like inexpensive steak like uh i can't think of any inexpensive steak <laughs> <laughs> steakums. How do you do? Steakums. Steak. Yeah. <laughs> Throw a couple steakums on there. What's uh, the nutritional value of this? Is steakum actually even steak? That's a good question. Ooh. Do they um, still make steakums? I think they do. Man, I used to love me some steakums. My dad used to make, we'd have steakum night. He'd just fry up some steakums with some onions, throw it on bread. Oh my God. Yep. They sell them at Walmart, Publix. Yeah, look at that. Oh my God. Only five eighty seven. Perfect. I could not eat that way. Plus, when you go back to a well balanced diet, you'll gain the weight back. They say you won't, though, if you if you do truly go back to a well balanced diet. They say if you eat that way, or this is what my friend said, and you could believe it or not. He's only ever lied to me three times. Uh, what happens is you it burns a lot of fat quickly. And then if you don't become like a pig, then uh, like a glutton, then you can uh, keep it off a little bit. You there bought you $1,300 worth of beef? Holy crap. What's a Philly boat? Flank steak is cheap usually. What's a Philly boat, Jay Monty? That sounds amazing. You know what I want to do is instead of just buying beef, I just go hunt my own. Yeah. Just like go out to a farm, just boom. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Farmer Joe. You didn't need this one anyways. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, this one was off in the corner. It looked sickly. <laughs> I just helped it out. Oh, wait. Hannah Giles on Rumble. There you go. That's weird. Philly boats are basically a stuffed bell pepper with Philly cheese steak filling. Whoa. Mm. That's amazing sounding. So no bread, no carbs. Mm -mm. I might have to make some of those. Philly boats. Oh. I get boat pictures of boats that are floating around Philadelphia, like the duck boat. <laughs> Daryl says his brother-in-law is taking a steer to get slaughtered on Saturday. Send us some fillets. Kitty, keto Philly cheesesteak zucchini boats. I don't know about the zucchini boat. Pepper boat. Now you're talking. Philly cheesesteak stuffed peppers. All right, we are back. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show.
This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855 Mark is our number. Today's whatever you want Wednesday. So if you want to talk about something, you better get on the horn because we got a lot of people that want to do exactly the same. I promise you I will play Hillary Clinton's answer to the question, will you run for president again here in just a minute? It may shock you. It may awe you. It may not do either. You, it may just make your ears bleed, and you may turn off the radio going, God, I hate her voice. Whatever. We're going to play it here in just a minute. But before we do, I wanted to get to Garth in Nevada. Hi, Garth. How are you? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you doing? Fantastic, Garth. Happy whatever you want Wednesday. Uh, real quick, you had a story you wanted to tell. Yeah. So I was at a campaign event for Adam Laxalt this yeah. weekend. Yeah, yeah. And one, yeah, one of our uh, local commissioners put it on at his house, and it was just about 20, 30 people. <laughs> And I was wearing your Remember Mar-a-Lago t-shirt there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard, that's great. <laughs> yeah. And so afterwards, we were all just kind of talking to each other, and I got to talk to Adam. And he, it finally dawned on him that what I was wearing. And he says, oh, I love that shirt. Can I take a picture of it? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So he pulled his phone out, took a picture of it, and he's like, oh, this is great. I'm going to go send this to my Trump team. Oh, perfect. And I don't know which Trump team it is, but, you know, it's it's going off there. So Yeah. Well, You're that's great. All the way out here in Nevada. Garth, <laughs> first of all, thank you so much for getting the um, Remember Mar-a-Lago shirt. That's been very popular. And if anyone wants one, it's at markkshop.com. Um, and thank you also for supporting Adam Laxalt and letting him take a picture of it. I imagine when he sends, he se says he's sending it to his Trump team, team, it's one of two teams. It's either the campaign team so that they can all get a, a big laugh about it, or it's the legal team so they can send us a cease and desist order and uh, tell us that, you know, <laughs> hey, we are Mar-a-Lago's copyrighted. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, uh, we'll find out which one it is. But Garth, thank you again. And how's it looking for Adam Laxalt out there in Nevada? You know, I think it's great. We had a, a booth for the Republican Party, our local Republican Party. Yeah. And we had a lot of people come by and talk to us. We t had a few people sign up to vote and do the opt out for the mail in ballot. Stuff. Yeah. So we're working real hard out here in the rural counties and, you know, trying to get our red wave going. Yeah. I'm a, you know what? I'm a big fan of that guy. And, a, and I love Nevada, first of all. And, and thank you for listening out there. And again, thank you so much for supporting the show with your purchase of the Remember Mar a Lago gear, which again, you can get at markkshop.com. And the polls say he's losing, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe those polls. And I think if there's a if there's a good chance for any of these uh, candidates, Herschel Walker in Georgia has a great chance right now versus Raphael Warnock. And I believe that Adam Laxalt has a great chance um, in Nevada as well. You know, I, I think that those are two states we're definitely going to be watching. Hey, thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. So I hope you're ready for Hillary because she is coming back with a, uh, with a vengeance. She is plastering herself all over the television. And that means that she's getting shared all over the Twitter and the Facebook. She's all over the tickety talk. And she is out there because we're pretty sure she wants to run for president again. And we're pretty sure that uh, she's going to run for president again in 2024. And the reason is because Nora O'Donnell asked her this question, and here was her answer. Would you ever run for president again? No, no. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mark K. clearly she said no, no. Would you ever run for president again? No, no. Yeah. And so why would you think now that she's going to run for president again? There's a couple of reasons. First of all, anybody who runs for president never says they're going to run for president. Joe Biden said he was never going to run for president. Joe Biden, you may remember, he retired from public office. After his son, Bo, died tragically from cancer, he said, ah, it's too much for me. I'm going to go retire and, and spend time with my family. And then, of course, they dragged him out of the mothballs. They dusted him off and said, come on, Joe, we got a bunch of losers up here on stage. And Donald Trump's going to be president for four more years. You're the only person anybody in the world's ever even heard of. So you get the job. He didn't want to do it. He didn't even really technically run. He sat in his basement and they had the team go out and, and hand out banners. And they had the team make some Zoom calls so that he could campaign from the comfort of his own home. So Hillary Clinton saying she's not going to run is a surefire sign that she is planning to run, but she doesn't want to tell anybody. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, the scrutiny would begin immediately. I mean, think about this. If Hillary Clinton threw her wig in the ring and said, I'm running for president, well, that's two years. 
that people are going to start scrutinizing her. Not like we already haven't been doing it for the last two decades, but it's two more years that people are going to start digging up dirt on her and trying to catch her and track her down. She's going to cruise for at least another year, maybe a year and a half before she even starts until she even starts entertaining the idea publicly. Privately, I'm sure she's already got the, the uh, guerrilla warfare and the ground campaign going. I'm sure they're already throwing around. I'm sure they're already throwing around campaign slogans like, OK, now are you ready for Hillary? OK, now are you with her? You know, taking the old stuff and just rehashing it. They're probably running tests on Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. And they're trying to run. They're running polling on who could be the best running mate for Hillary Clinton. Clearly not that guy they had last time who's nobody. Nobody even remembers. Do you Trivia question. Who ran as Hillary Clinton's running mate in 2016? Does anyone remember that guy? I'll give you a hint. I think he was from Virginia. Uh, this is uh, this is this is this is a big problem for the Democrats. Who's going to replace Joe Biden? And they've only got two or three people who have the, the name and the ability to, to mount a campaign against Donald Trump. One of them is Hillary Clinton. And she is one of the most ambitious people in the entire world. She believes her role in life, her the reason for her being, is to be the first female president of the United States of America. It was taken from her in 2016. It was taken from her again in 2020. She believes now that the that the bitter taste is off of her name. She believes that Joe Biden has taken, it will take four years by the time it's over. Joe Biden will have made people so disgusted with him in these four years that they will for forget how disgusted they were with her for so many years ahead of time. She believes that Joe Biden has screwed this country up so much that nobody's going to remember all of the stuff that happened with her and her email server. Nobody's going to remember the stuff that happened with her and Benghazi and the Benghazi hearings. Nobody's going to remember Whitewater or the multitude of people uh, connected to the, the Biden clan that have just mysteriously wound up dead. Nobody's going to remember what the, the, uh, uh, the recordings of her as a prosecutor and as a litigator uh, besmirching women and women's rights. Nobody's going to remember all of that stuff. Nobody's going to remember the fact that she stood by her man after he took advantage, sexually molested an intern in the Oval Office. Nobody's, we're all going to forget about that because Biden's so bad. That's what she's hoping for. She needs to give herself as much time from the last time she ran for president to the next time that she's going to run for president for people to forget all of that. And when asked the question, will you, she has no other recourse but to answer no. Would you ever run for president again? No, no. And there's a key, though, in this, too. The next part of the answer, she talks about what she is going to do. But I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we have a president who respects our democracy and the rule of law and upholds our institutions. Well, okay, now that, by the way, leads me to believe she's running against Joe Biden <laughs> because she's like, if I'm going to make sure that the guy in charge or whoever's in the, the Oval Office does all of these things. Joe Biden does none of those things, BT dubs. Joe Biden doesn't respect the rule of law. Joe Biden doesn't respect our institutions. Look at what he did to the FBI. Look at what he's doing to the IRS. Look at the Department of Justice. Tell me that there hasn't been a more corrupt Department of Justice since, well, the last time Joe Biden was in the White House with Barack Obama. Probably the two most corrupt Department of Justice heads we've had or attorneys general that we've had were Eric Holder and Merrick Garland. And one of them was Barack Obama's crony and the other one is Joe Biden's. And those two dudes, along with the two dudes in the Oval Office, did more damage to the Department of Justice, to the FBI, to the um, American outlook on our federal law enforcement system, to the injustices that one party rule over government have. I mean, this is something that that is a it is a this is a continuation. This is a constant when it comes to Democrat leadership. They bastardize every single uh, every single um, agency at their disposal, and then, then they tell you that the reason there's no trust from the American people is because of the Republicans. Hillary Clinton's doing the same thing here. She's setting it up. Listen to what she said one more time. But I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we have a president who respects our democracy and the rule of law and upholds our institution. All right, so here's how this plays out. Hillary Clinton goes on TV and she says something like that. I'm not going to run for president, but I'm going to work behind the scenes to make sure we have somebody who is honest and forthright and law abiding and will respect our institutions. And then they're going to start introducing these candidates. They're going to start introducing Pete Buttigieg, Kamala Harris, Gavin Newsom, perhaps. 
they're going to start bringing up people like Elizabeth Warren again. And one by one, they're going to find fault. And Hillary Clinton eventually is going to say, you know, I wasn't going to run for president. I told you I wasn't going to run for president. I told you that I was going to work to find somebody who could restore dignity to this office and make sure that it's never been and that will never be besmirched by a by a criminal masterminding all this stuff. And she's going to say, and unfortunately, it it seems like there that person doesn't exist. So I'm going to step in because we can't have Donald Trump back in the White House. Joe Biden, by the way, will have already stepped down or been pushed out. or That's going to happen. Joe Biden will not run again. That speech sealed the fate uh, on, in Philadelphia. If there was ever a hope of him running again, that speech is all the ammunition the other side needs. That speech is a campaign ad. It's a 30-minute campaign ad for insert Republican for president 2024. Joe Biden handed the election to the Republicans in Philadelphia last week with his Bielsa Biden Act. And so Hillary Clinton's going to swoop in in 2024 and say, you know, I, I had no intention of doing this. But it seems now that J that Donald Trump has to be stopped. And dadgummit, I'm going to take one for the team and I'm going to step in there and I'm going to stop him. That's how this thing is going to play out. 855 940 mark is our number 855-940-6275 by the way <laughs> hillary clinton did say something else that we should all remember um was i happy when i beat donald trump by nearly three million votes but lost the electoral college no i was not happy did i even for a nanosecond think i'm going to claim victory and try to get the democrats to refuse to certify the election no no not even for a nanosecond a nanosecond is very very small it's like very 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 small she didn't think for a nanosecond in the three days that she refused to cede the election she did not call donald trump on election night and say i concede she did not call him the next day she took three days Till she picked up the phone. Three days. Are you telling me she was curled up with a vat of haagen watching old movies uh, for three, uh, maybe Hallmark Channel? Because I think by, by November they have the Christmas movies already starting. You're telling me she was curled up in a blanket, sobbing her eyes out for three days, just mustering the strength? No. She was on the phone with her lawyers. She was on the phone with her, her political friends. She was on the phone with all of her superdelegates. She was on the phone with every congressperson she could think of. She was racking her brain. She was going through the Constitution of the United States of America, probably for the first time. And she was trying to find a way to do exactly what she said she wasn't going to do. Not even a nanosecond did she try to stop Donald Trump. Not, not a nanosecond did she question the legitimacy or the outcome of the election. Not a nanosecond. Because she sure, she took three days, three days to say, congrats, Trump, you won, I lost. Good job, buddy. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Three days is a heck of a lot of nanoseconds. I'm pretty sure one of them, that idea, crawled into that, you know, mousy hair, brain of hers. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. It is whatever you want Wednesday. So we're going to let you talk about whatever it is you want to want, whatever you want uh, to talk about. You can give us a buzz. You can send us an open mic message. We're going to get to them all here in just a minute. Quick break. More Mark K Show coming up. All right, guys, is Hannah still here? It's like trying to find Hannah. It's like, where is she? Is she on Facebook? Is she on Rumble? Is she on Twitch? Where's Hannah? It's like, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Where on the internet is Hannah Geik? She's like everywhere. She's, I don't see her on Getter. I don't see her on YouTube. I don't see her on FB. Uh oh. She's taking a break. I don't see her on, oh, she's probably in there. <laughs> I don't see her on, I don't see her anywhere. Is it, has anyone seen Hannah? Oh, there she is. She's on Rumble. <laughs> Still here. It's weird when I can't see you. Like if I can, if I look here, usually I see you there. I mean, if I look there, I actually do see. But you know what I mean.
Hannah just texted me, OMG, I am still here. Okay, good. <laughs> Hannah, do me a favor. Every like 20 minutes or so, just text me, I'm still here, so I know you're, you're still here. Thanks. That would be great. Hannah, I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday. Yeah, that's good. At Metro by T-Mobile, you can save more What's when you choose from the largest secrets? selection of free 5G phones, like the Samsung Galaxy 5G. Are you looking up the uh, iPhone 14? Like that, no, I'm looking up. This is just mad. Save more only at Metro. Now, Hillary, yesterday was Super Tuesday, and uh, you've been clear that you're not. Oh, that's a, that's a long time ago. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Your kids, your grandkids. Just a she little. Does. Just a little. Hannah, the don't way you just me. texted that. <laughs> I'm glad well, you usually, uh, sent a disclaimer afterwards. No, it, was, no. it was just a continuation of a conversation. Put you in your place. <laughs> Inspiring and different. <laughs> All that. Them, yeah. but and, and violence. Testify. Son had just been too much. The whole deal. Questions about what does gutsiness really mean? How do you make difficult choices? Oh no, I dropped my pen. <sighs> Hannah just wrote, I've been taking an extensive log. <laughs> uh, okay. Yep. TMI. Good job. <laughs> Is there a TMI? Okay. Oh, I'll send Chandler Bing. Uh, she said, you didn't read the rest. <laughs> I think we're trying to protect the public. Protect the public. What if Hillary takes Nancy's spot? Ugh. Well, she can't because she doesn't live in California. Squeak. <laughs> Blog Lives Matter. And here we go. Our troops, so it's not so bad for me to shower with my daughter. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it ain't fun. <laughs> wow, is that the is that the excuse, uh, sir? Did you shower with your daughter? Hey, God prepped our troops. Why can't I shower with my daughter? I didn't know she was gonna write it all down. 855 940 Mark is our number. 855 940 6275. It is whatever you want Wednesday, and we've gotten to very few calls so far today, so it's probably time we make up for that. Uh, Sean is in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Hi, Sean. How are you? Thank you so much for calling the Mark K Show. What's up? Mark K, how you doing, man? Doing swell, man. Happy whatever you want Wednesday, Sean. Whatever did you want to talk about? Well, uh, first of all, WDBO sucks. Um, <laughs> I got to get that out of the way first. Uh, second of all, I just called, called to give you a hard time. I mean, I don't know if Hillary is 
is like on the same level as Joe. I mean, I think Joe is on a lower level than everybody. I mean, he's yeah. just not quite. All, he's just, yeah, I mean, he's just not there. Yeah. But I mean, you got to understand where Hillary's coming from. She has to placate to the crowd. Yeah. I mean, I get where you're coming from. You know, she she lied, but that's. I mean, she was born a liar. I mean, that's just what she does. I mean, you can't. I don't like her. I don't think anybody should really like her. I mean, I think she's. She's probably one of the worst people to ever, you know, like. Sean, I'm confused. Are you calling to defend Hillary Clinton? Because if you are, you're doing a really bad job of it. <laughs> I was. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Marque. No, I right. listen to your show. No. I clearly would not be calling okay. to defend Hillary Clinton. Oh, okay, I right. just think, no, I, I love the fact that, you, you you know, you give her a hard time. I I really hope she, she does run for president again. But I just, I just hope that you see. Yes, we understand that she, she lies. Got and, it. Okay. She yeah. has to placate. She yes. has to placate to, to Jimmy Fallon's, you know, band of idiots that listen to him and listen to her. And, right. You know. Oh yeah, no, a hundred percent. And worry. I just, and I, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a hard time because I mean, it seems like you've been doing really well lately. So I figured I'd, eh, you know. Yeah, I, I like Mark that. K. Let's, let's bust on him a little bit. <laughs> Sean, no, I appreciate it. You're right. She is a liar pathologically, uh, but she's a Democrat. So that's how, so we know that that's true. Um, and, and I appreciate that. The, listen, the, uh, the, a couple of things that you, that you brought up, uh, the placating. And that's why she's going on this tour. She's placating every single group that she can. She's on CBS with Nora O'Donnell to placate the old news-loving libs who've abandoned CNN and need to know that Hillary Clinton's still around and kicking. She's going on Jimmy Fallon so she can get the millennials who think that Jimmy Fallon is, I don't know, a news source. And then she's going on The View today to get the angry liberal women who are just so disgusted with everything and can't believe that even though most of them are postmenopausal, their right to abortion is gone, taken away by the Republicans on the Supreme Court. There's so many angry, liberal, suburban, postmenopausal women who are so mad at the Supreme Court that they can't get an abortion, meanwhile totally ignoring the fact that they can't even get pregnant. That's exactly what she's fighting for. So I think the when you look at who she's hitting, when you look at all these news shows, and when you look at what she's saying, yes, she's lying about what her plans are in 2024 uh, because, well, she can't let him out yet. She's got to make sure people realize, A, she's still alive, and B, she still is politically motivated, and then C, she's got to wait for Joe Biden to get out of the way so that she can, D, roll on in there and uh, and stake her claim for a rematch probably with Donald Trump in 2024. 24. I could be wrong. And if you, if you disagree, let me know. I'm thinking, I'm calling it today. Trump Clinton 2024. That's my, that I'm like 92% sure. Sorry, my lights were unevenly glowing on the wall. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> la 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 la. La 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 la. Oh, Hannah's still here. Yay! Hi, Hannah.
Guys, Hannah's still here. Phi. FYI. Hannah, did you hear about the steak and eggs diet? I need my back screen. I gotta get you back. Um, I guess I'll come scratch your back. No, no, I got it right here. Oh, okay. Different back scratcher. Gotcha. But I appreciate it. <laughs> I like that Jay's up to any challenge. Is Frank just making a general comment, or does he have a more to say about that? No, he has more to say about oh, it. Okay, good. Uh, is Dave a conspiracy theory? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine. We'll. Uh, okay. We'll let him. Well, that's a good way to promote conspiracy theory Thursday. This is the best thing I've ever bought myself. I think. This will be good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is good. Alligator paw. I guess paw foot. Alligator foot back scratcher. This is like, this is the most Florida man thing ever, but it's so good. And the best thing is you can get four of these with one gator. So one gator, you can get four of those. It's really. So if you got like a family of four, you each get one with just one gator. Sometimes though, the gators are missing toes. So, you know, that's not good because... Have you seen the picture of the gator that's missing like the top part of his his snout? No. It's like it's like half of his snout is gone. We went to the uh we went to the Okie Finoki once and there was a gator that had like half a tail, three legs, one eye, and just looked horrible. And we're like, what's wrong with that gator? And they're like, Oh, that uh, that gator's enemy is Goliath or something. And we're like, who's Goliath? They go, Goliath, you don't want to see Goliath. Because <laughs> apparently there's like some 400-pound alligator or 600-pound alligator who just decimates all the other alligators. And that one apparently was its favorite. And continues to be, it sounds like. Yeah. I had this great picture because we were going to the car, and there's a sign on the sidewalk that says, please remain on sidewalk for your own safety with a picture of a gator. Mm-hmm. And there's a gator laying in the middle of the sidewalk right in front of that sign. So we're all walking around, and I take a picture. I go, well, what are we supposed to do in this instance? <laughs> trying to see if they've got a picture of him. I want to see how big he is. Oh, well, look at that. Okieswamp.org has a page that says, Meet the Alligators. Oh, yeah, there's alligators all over. I Okay, the steak and eggs diet is essentially what you're doing, but you eat other meats as well. And you eat cheese. This would have no cheese. It would be, there's two components to it, steak and eggs. And that's it. Not pork rinds and cheese and chicken and what else do you what else what else does she eat? Do you eat like buffalo dip or something like that? And uh and uh something else. Steak and eggs. I love eggs. Can't go wrong with eggs. So when did you uh, hear about Goliath? Oh, I don't know if that was his name, but it was uh, probably 10 years ago we were there. He may have moved on to greener pastures. Mm.
Ooh, 10 feet. Mm-mm. Did she trim those weird hairs on Leo's back? Question mark. <laughs> and we're back. Okay. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. Mark K, you get me through my day. Without this, without your podcast, I wouldn't make it through my work week. Have a good one. Well, listen, thank you so much, and I appreciate that. And, yes, don't forget that after the show, we uh, turn every single every single moment of this program into a podcast, which you can download wherever your podcasts are. And every morning before the show, Mark K. Saves the Republic, our brand-new podcast, which is rocketing up the charts. If you haven't yet subscribed, uh, do so. It's great. It's uh, uninterrupted 20 minutes or so before the show, talking about the big stuff going on today. We talked about Kathy Griffin threatening civil war if Republicans win the uh, if Republicans win the election in November, uh, you can go listen to that again wherever podcasts are sold it's, or downloaded. It's called Mark K Saves the Republic, and of course we will get into that here in just a minute because that's the big news of the day. But first, it's whatever you want Wednesday, and it's time for you to tell us whatever you want to talk about. Michelle is in Jacksonville. Hello, Michelle. How are you? Thanks for calling the Mark K Show. Hey, Mark, man, you rock. Man. That was so awesome this morning. You are a true. American patriot, brother, well, and sure. I appreciate you. I, I appreciate uh, but, you, too. Thank you so much, sister. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah. But, but, but I want to say something. Okay. I, I, this is Shout out everybody. But listen, we all came here to have this human experience, and most of you don't realize this or know it. But know this. You, me, all of us are gods and goddesses, and we all need to realize that. We volunteered to come here to ascend and liberate Earth. So let's get to doing it. This is we're having a human experience. Oh, and wait, hold like on. That uh, that's a great Michelle. I appreciate. It. We wait a minute. We all volunteered to come here. Yep, sure did. Oh, okay. I didn't. All right. Well, hey, listen. Thanks so much for calling. We we appreciate. It. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember raising my hand when that happened. But I'll take your word for it, Michelle, because you sound yeah real fired up. Thank you so much for the call. Eight five five nine four zero Mark uh, is the number. Jason is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's checked in at KRMG. Hey, Jason, how are you? Good. Uh, it was, um I don't know if you remember this, but the Clintons really have no place talking about stolen documents from the archives or anywhere else. <laughs> oh yeah, I, know. I remember. Remember one of their cronies that went, uh, his name was Sandy Burglar, yeah, AKA, San AKA Sandy Burger. Yeah. And he got it. He went into the archives and stole classified documents mm -hmm. pretty much on their behalf because he was trying to hide some of the mistakes they made surrounding terrorist attacks and things like that. It was so, it was a it was it was a purge mission before they left office. Sandy Berger, who get this, was the United States uh, National Security Advisor. He was the top intelligence official at the White House under the Clintons, and the National Security Advisor went into the archives and stole classified documents to destroy any record of them. You're exactly right. So nobody could pin the blame on the Clintons, not to mention all of the other emails on her server that were destroyed and bleach bitten and burned and thrown into a volcano and yeah, I don't get fed to an alligator and then they waited for the alligator to poop it out and then they dissolved it and I don't know what they did, but they got rid of it all pretty well. And, and this is something that it, there has been a long history of. Uh, Donald Trump, by the way, did none of that. Um, Donald Trump didn't say you when the archives came to Donald Trump said you got some of our stuff. He said, oh, yeah, come on down and take a uh, take a look. Tell me what you need. And um, a lot of this is back and forth hearsay. A lot of this is, hey, uh, we need to pin you on something. We don't have anything concrete. So we're going to go with this. And Donald Trump said, the hell you are went to court. And all of a sudden what happens is we have a special master. And what the DOJ thought was going to be a cakewalk to try to to try to pin Donald Trump as a master criminal is uh, is just, you know, leaving a lot of egg on their face. 855-940-MARK is our number. Pam is in Ohio. Pam, thanks so much for calling the Mark K Show. How you doing, Pam? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? Swell. Thank you for asking. It's whatever you want Wednesday, Pam. Whatever did you want to talk about today? Well, first, I just want to tell you I love your show. Well, uh, thank you. As always. But, well, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love how you can uh, turn bad news and make make us laugh. But um, my question is, uh, 
you were saying about Hillary running in 24. Um, I was wondering if you, what you would think about if she's going to push Chelsea to run in place of her. That way, it's still Clinton. What you poor Chelsea Clinton. Poor, the only child of Bill and Hillary. Well, the only child that we know of. Well, I guess of Bill's right. that we know of. Uh, right. but Chelsea Clinton, 42 years old, mom, wanting desperately to seek some kind of fame, still riding her mom's coattails. I mean, if you notice this, anytime you see Chelsea Clinton, she's never by herself. She's always with Hillary, whether it's a book, whether it's a documentary, whether it's this, whether it's that, whether it's the other. I don't know that Chelsea Clinton has any chops to run for and win the presidential nomination, let alone the election. I don't think she has any kind of uh, political or governmental acumen. I don't think she can. I mean, uh, she can't even do her own book tour. Everything she does is, I mean, she's she's never cut that cord. She and her mother are inseparable. And that right there would be a huge problem for her should she ever run. I don't think she would ever run for another reason, though. Hillary Clinton does not want her daughter to be the first female president of the United States. She does not want her daughter to be the first uh, member of the family other than Bill to be president of the United States. No, Hillary Clinton is destined to be president of the United States, not Chelsea Clinton. And that not there's no there's no seven minute abs. There's no six minute abs. Excuse me. I forgot the six minute. No, seven minute abs. If you uh, if you ever saw uh, something about Mary, you know what I'm talking about. But that's the whole point. Hillary Clinton wants this for herself, not for her offspring. She believes the best thing she can do for Chelsea Clinton and Bill Clinton and everybody else in this country, the best thing she can do for you and your young daughter is for her to be the first female president of the United States, not anybody else. 855-940-MARK is our number. Also, Chelsea Clinton as a president would just be, you want to talk about, man, you want to talk about the dictators taking over the world. Well, bye-bye, Taiwan. 855-940-MARK uh, is our number. Dave is in Jacksonville. Hello, Dave. How are you? Thanks for calling the Mark K Show. Hey, Mark. How are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm doing great, Dave. It's whatever you want Wednesday, sir. What did you want to talk about today? So I was hoping I could get you a quick and early conspiracy theory. I uh, Well, I, Dave, I you know, however, that we, you know, we reserve Thursday for conspiracy theories. I, I do, but I, I am throwing myself at the mercy of the court. Okay, all right, all right. Is it topical? It, it is unfortunate. Well, it is topical because it involves a member of your staff. Oh, is it me? No. Is it Jay? I hope not. No. Okay, then we Ooh. can hear this one. Sure. What's going? On? <laughs> What's your early conspiracy theory about Hannah? <laughs> so here's the thing. Yeah. I don't think Hannah's actually. Sick. Yeah, I think all these times that she has to run out and get fresh eyelashes and whatever it is, she's leaving something in the office that's been infecting you guys with a slightly debilitating virus. Really? Now, her being out is the final dose that you're going to take, and next week you're all of a sudden not going to be able to do the show, allowing her to take over. When she takes over, it becomes Hannah's show. Yeah. That's interesting. So... She's slowly taking over the show by killing me and Jay. Not killing. Oh, just giving us just a debilitating disease. Yes, until she can get enough exposure that she can get her own show. Yeah. And then, boom, riches, fame, all that good stuff. <laughs> riches and Wait a minute. I'm still waiting for those. <laughs> you know what? I, I, look, if uh, here's the thing. Not that I want to get any kind of debilitating disease. And if Hannah wanted her own show, I'd help her get it. Um, I just, you know, I just admire, if that's the case, I would have to say I just admire the passion and the, uh, and the um, you know, the desire. It, it takes a lot to, a lot of people say they want to succeed, but very few people actually have the chops to do what it takes. So if I come down with some debilitating disease, at the hands of Hannah Guile, then, you know, kudos to her for going after what she wants, man. Everyone has a dream. Very few people actually chase it. 855-940-MARK is our number. By the way, Conspiracy Theory Thursday, tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central Time. If you have a good conspiracy theory, we do reserve those for Thursday, unless, of course, it involves uh, Hannah's illness, in which case we'll, we'll, we'll take him any time. 855-940-MARK is our number. Uh, this is John in Sanford, Florida. Hello, John. How are you? Hey, good, Mark. Coming to you almost near the Sanford Zoo, and it's a hot day down here. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, sure is. What's going on? What's going on in Sanford this whatever you want Wednesday? Well, okay, I got two questions for you, and, okay. and one of them was just kind of, okay, th this is the thing. You know how sometimes... So often in politics in the news, 
they throw out some fairly new term that's new, uh, you know, kind of new to almost all of us. Yeah. But, but they throw it out there in a way that they just kind of assume that everybody knows what it is. And the the one I'm thinking of right now, you, you're going to fill me in, but then i got one more question for you when you sure. tell me. Sure, sure. Um, what the hell is a special master? I mean, come on. They're, they're throwing that term out as if we've been hearing about special masters all of our lives. A picture of Kung Fu Panda or something. Yeah. What, what exactly is a special master? Kung, and then i got one more question for you. Yeah, Kung Fu Panda is a great, I always think of, you know, uh, I always think of Karate Kid. You know, this is my special master, Mr. Miyagi. He taught me to wax on right. and wax off. Uh, the special master is, and you know, this is really interesting. It's not the first time there's been a special master, but it's not something as common as what you would call a, um, what you would call a, uh, a special prosecutor. And the difference is that as far as I can tell and as far as I've been able to discern with my limited knowledge of legal terminology is that when, uh, when it, the prosecution calls for a special investigator, that's when you get a special prosecutor. When it's somebody on the defense or the defensive side of things, then you get a special master. Also, the special master seems to be something that is more, um, it's, it's more appointed because you believe that judicial orders or judicial policy or the, the legal way things should be happening is not happening that way. Uh, for example, J Donald Trump believed that the FBI wrongly took stuff out of his place, wrongly took documents that belonged to him, wrongly took his passports, financial records. Now we're finding personal medical records were involved in there, notes between him and other world leaders that were his property, all of these things. So when you have a dispute about the process, the judicial process, that's when the defendant can call for, and in this case be granted, a special master as opposed to for example bob Mueller, who was a special prosecutor because he was appointed by the prosecution that's my understanding of it i could be wrong if i am nobody tell me well it's very interesting and brett bear was even uh, speculating the other day about how uh, there's only a certain very finite number of people who would be qualified correct yeah to but do this. because of the top yeah, secret clearance top secret needed Sure. Yeah, and, and Brett Baer was even speculating that Barack Obama, of all people, might be one of the candidates. Yeah, like, come on, it's a cold day in hell before that happens. Yeah, I don't think that but, would happen. Uh, I don't think that would happen. All right, now, speaking of a cold day in hell, I do have another question for you. Okay. And it's this. On WOTV, on the last uh, top of the news thing, they announced that today is National Beer Lover's Day. And I know that you fall into that category. So what is your favorite brewski? What's my favorite? It's National Beer Lovers Day. Yeah. Wow. What's my? Fa I'll tell you what. My favorite beer is uh, the one that's in the glass in front of me. So, <laughs> what is that mine? Great. That's what happens to be my favorite one. Hey, I didn't know that. Uh, that you know what? Fun fact. I don't know if you know this. National Beer Lovers Day is today, but National Beer Day is in April. Friday, April seventh is National Beer Day. And then you've got May, June, July, August, September. Five months later, National Beer Lovers Day. Why there's two different days, I can't tell you. I you think they just you think National Beer Day and National Beer Lovers Day would be the same damn thing, but I guess it's just two more excuses uh, for people to go out and drink way too many brewskis. Eight five five nine four zero Mark is our number. Hey, thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. Thanks for the great questions. Quick break. More of your phone calls. More whatever you want Wednesday. More Mark K Show coming up. Yay! All right, I felt like I should yell. I wish he hadn't told me that. I know, right? David Mandarin's uh, incoming. Mark and Jay, after show locals live today. Dave, great idea. Not going to happen. I have to have a meeting. Uh, and then I have to go get my kid from school. So it won't happen today. Maybe tomorrow, if the girl's not back, which the girls... Ow, I really hurt my face. What did I do? That's weird. I hit my desk all the time, and I never feel pain. But this time, I must have... Uh, I must have uh, hit something. Oh, you sent that yesterday. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dave. Uh, all right, I shouldn't have read... I'll, I should have read that tomorrow. So tomorrow, um, I'll read... I sent that yesterday. I'll send that yesterday.
thing. <laughs> Ow. What did you do? I hit the desk, but I hit it in a weird way, and it hurt my all my hand really hurts. Wants to talk about abortion, doesn't want to argue. Mm -hmm. Well, she called the wrong person. <laughs> okay, these are good. We'll get some of these. Um, gosh, today's going so fast, and we have so many calls still. And I still have like three more topics I didn't get. Hmm. Uh oh. What? Barb is at Barbie is at uh Hannah's. Uh oh. Why is it a bad thing? No. Oh, okay. My mom brought me yogurt just now. Oh. It's got potassium. Whoop, but wait, whoop. does it have meat is it meat yogurt? Yeah, is it meat yogurt? Because you can't have it unless it's meat yogurt. <laughs> she is texting up a storm. You know what you should have, Hannah, <laughs> is you should have some kimchi. Hmm. Also, by the way, I will do that. Thank you very much. Uh, also, what? I haven't poisoned you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the. Okay, well, that clears it all up. Because Hannah texting, I haven't poisoned you, just makes me think. Because if someone poisoned me, they would definitely text me and say, oops, I poisoned you. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? No, kimchi is great. Kimchi is great for gut health. I don't know if there's any potassium in it. She says kimchi would destroy her. <laughs> mm. Oh, by the way, you need to leave some of your dry shampoo in the studio for when you're sick. Because when you don't spray it every day, there's the, I walked in and it smelled like funky. It was a little weird. There was like a funky odor. Like a stale room with guys in it. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh, it usually smells better than this. And I realized because you have per, like perfume and aerosol hairspray and i don't have though either of those for obvious reasons um but you should leave one so we can spray it uh we can spray it around or i guess we could get an air freshener hmm. one or the other or you should bring some wax for that wax thing that we have in the back i thought you were going to do that you never did the wax uh, the little the little red white and blue thing is actually a wax burner That's actually, a, you put wax in the top, and the, the light heats it up, and then it smells nice. Um, <laughs> smells, smells like two guys. Hello. Two dudes. <laughs> hey, what's that smell? Oh, that's my new cologne. It's called Two Dudes. Etc. says, smelled like stinky men. I do want to use dry shampoo. I feel like I could do, I mean, I could use dry shampoo. I don't even really need shampoo. That's what my son asked me. He goes, Daddy, why do you have shampoo? And I said, you know... Wishful thinking. <laughs> you know, hope. Uh, no, because there's little tiny, you can't really see them. There's like the smallest little, like, nan like nano hairs, to quote Hillary Clinton, all over my head. And so, and I have this, uh, this uh, peppermint tea tree oil. So it really, like, my scalp gets all tingly and it makes me feel like hair's growing back, but it's clearly not at all. Uh, but it, anyway, but I don't, like, if I didn't have shampoo, I could just use soap. That's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. I could just take a bar of soap. Jay will tell you. Yep, I just use body wash. He just uses body wash, yeah, yeah see, because he's girly. He listens to Captain and Tennille, <laughs> gets, gets his Captain and Tennille on, gets his body wash. He's How did like, you know? My lupa. Yeah, his lupa. <laughs> Calgon, take Jay away. Oh, that's funny. What, now? Yeah, now is great. All right, later. Uh, and I had a friend who was in the Marine Corps, and he said they had one bar of soap, no oh, shampoo. We got three seconds. And they had two minutes to shower. <laughs> Yeah. This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855 mark is our number. Wasting no time. We are going right back to the uh, Mark K Show lines. We don't have a catchy name for them. We got a, the Mark lines. That sounds weird. Sounds like, the, it's like a cocaine thing. I'll just, we'll go back to the phones. Frank is in North Carolina. Frank, thanks for calling the Mark K Show. It's whatever you want Wednesday. What's up? Yes, Mark. How are you and uh, Jay doing today? And I miss Hannah there. Um, I've got three issues to bring up. Um, one is 911 is this Sunday. It happens to be my 66th birthday on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
9-11. Anyway, yeah, it's the, uh, it's the 21st yes, sir, anniversary. Yes, sir. 9-11, 9-11 is my 6th and 6th birthday. Yeah, well, happy birthday. I know happy a lot of birthday. people. And I, for, it, it gets but lost anyway, in the, the shuffle reason, there. But anyway, the reason for my call is oh, yeah. I was bringing up the fact that 9-11 is Sunday. And if you'll read from Wikipedia, it says in her role as Secretary of State, since we started this show with Hillary Clinton at yeah. nine. Yeah, yeah. Hillary Clinton subsequently took responsibility for the security lapses in Benghazi. Mm. Benghazi took place on September 11, 2012, 10 years ago. And if you'll listen on Sunday for any comments being made through the liberal news media, you'll hear crickets, silence, dead silence. It's been that way for about, since my birthday, I have a lot of interest in 9-11. Yeah. Been that way for about what five years now. I think they're trying to slip away from the fact of what they did, emphasis on they, Barack Obama's administration. You know, um, when you when you and I've about... often wondered why oh, yeah, the silence. Ahead. We do we do honor all those in Shanksville, Washington D.C., and of sure. course New York City. Absolutely, but silence about the Benghazi attack in ten years ago. Yeah, Frank, and I think you and I think you hit the nail on the head. There's two reasons for it. Number one, they want to purge all negative things about Hillary Clinton because they want to prep her for a run for president in 2024. And drawing attention, putting the spotlight back on Benghazi, back on all of her missteps would really be a problem for 2024. Now, there's a lot of us here on the other side that remember all of that. I remember filling in for Herman Cain during the Benghazi hearings, and it was one of the craziest things I've ever, we used to pep, we'd pop in and out live during the show because they were going on uh, while I was filling in for Herman one week. Uh, but the second thing is, um, as you pointed out, everything now hinges on Donald Trump. Nobody is as bad as Donald Trump. Nothing anyone has ever done is as bad as Donald Trump. But you pointed out 9-11, you pointed out Benghazi. We can even point to the Afghanistan withdrawal. Donald Trump never did anything that was as haphazard and spineless and cowardly and destructive as any Democrat in the last 20 years. Bill, Hillary, Barack, Joe. Uh, none of them can hold a candle to the kind of military leadership that, uh, that Donald Trump showed. Hey, thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. Quick break. More Mark K Show coming up. And a happy early birthday, Frank. That was good. September 11th, Sunday, right? I think so. Is that my anniversary? Yes, it is Sunday. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, how often do you shave? To my face? Yeah. It's a very personal question. Oh, sorry. No, I, I probably, I probably shave. Okay. I could shave up to three times a week. Mm -hmm. I should shave twice a week. But I'm lucky if I do if I do it once a week. It's just a hassle. Yeah, I just there's no point for me to shave. There's no point for me to wear a tie. There's no point for me to, uh, you know, do I you know I shower every day because that's important. But um, I and I usually it's so funny. I usually go by my head. Like if my my face can be scruffy mm -hmm. and I totally don't even I just like ignore it. I don't even realize it. But if my head gets puffy, I go. It's time for me to shave, and then I just do the whole damn thing. I try to, but then when I start going to going to bed and it's been like four or five days i can yeah. feel it yeah like on my arm i'm just like ah, oh, i gotta yeah. shave in the morning you just drink more and then you just pass out you don't even realize it <laughs> i could do that yeah you wake up you got like red marks on your face and your arm from your scruffy hair be like ah, oh, <laughs> at least i passed out no it's uh yeah it used to be i it used to be a lot pricklier than it was now it's gray too so sometimes my wife will be like you should shave because i can see the gray and i go oh all right well i mean i'm old you should get one of these. What? What is that? That's the uh, electric. Oh, you have that right there? Yeah. Oh, you're just shaving right now? No, I did this morning. Oh, did you? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. I just wish, like, here's the thing. Now that I've, now that I've come to grips with the fact that this is that I'll always be this way, I'm annoyed that my hair continues to grow. Yeah. Like I'm like I have very little hair. It's in very little places, very few places. Why, why does it have to grow? And I think it grows faster because I'll, I'll shave my head at least, like I said, once a week. But uh, I'm just annoyed by it. Like, just stop growing if you're not going to. You're not going to be. If you're pointless anyway. Yeah. You're not up here anymore, so stop, right. stop growing here. Yeah, exactly.
And the nose. And the ears. Yeah. Like, I don't need that. I don't need that. I need hair on my head, not on my ears. Yeah, definitely not the ears. Jeez. I remember when I found my first hair on my ear, and I was like, what is this? Mm. When? Why? Did I ever tell you a story <laughs> about my daughter when she was, like, six years old? We were in Rockville visiting our in my in-laws, and we were wandering around, around the city, and I go in the bathroom. At, like, we've been out all day, and I've been there for, like, two days already. And we go into the bathroom, and I'm washing my hands, and I look in the mirror, and there's a hair growing out of my ear, but, like, an inch and a half out, straight out. <laughs> and I'm like, and it's clearly noticeable. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is the, how did this pop up so quickly? So I go outside, and they're all waiting for me. It's my wife and my two kids. And I look at them, I go, hey, didn't, why did nobody tell me about this long hair sticking out of my ear? And my wife looks like this. And my son looks like this. And my daughter looks at me and goes, um, I thought you liked it. <laughs> I was just like. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, thank you for answering me. And I appreciate the quickness with which you came up with that clearly wrong, you know, uh, BS retort. But after That's that, funny. I, after that, I was like, you're going to go play this kid. And then I pulled it, pulled it right in front of him. I thought you liked it. Uh-oh. I guess I was supposed to relay something. What were you supposed to relay? Or relay? Guys, Hannah's still here. Oh, Brenna, Brenna says, I about fell over seeing your wedding picture where you had hair. Oh, yeah? Never would have thought ginger was your tone. Strawberry blonde, yeah. We have, uh, wait, I'll bring in a picture of me from, I want to say like sixth grade that my kids like to laugh at. Because not only did I have hair, I had too much at the time. It was, there's a, it's like this thing. I always had too much hair or just not enough. Never the perfect amount. I am sorry to hear that guy, Madison. What happened? He says, Mark and Jay, I'm bald as a, I'm bald as a cue ball. Mm-hmm. But all my hair grows on my back and chest. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> Ew! Oh, yuck! I just read that and Facebook crashed. <laughs> Some, somebody said we have to put uh, the Joe Rogan vote Republican on this thing. That's kind of funny. Oh, while we're here, mm. why do golfers hate cake? Why do golfers hate cake? Yep. Uh, because it's because they can't eat it with a fork. I don't know why. Because they might get a slice. Ah, should have seen that one coming. Do not hide the bullhorn. Everyone loves the bullhorn. Those people that came in today that you forgot to tell us were coming in today, Hannah, they loved the bullhorn, right, Jay? Yep. They were like, oh, my God, it's the bull. In fact, it was so funny. They walked in through. They're like, oh, my God, it's the bullhorn. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, all of a sudden, the bullhorn's famous. They were very Aubrey and Carol. And we got five seconds. Four. Three, two, one. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. 
Vice President Harris makes us embarrassed. Cackles until our ears hurt. Praises disorder done squat at the border. I can't decide which is worse. Don't blame me, baby. Vote for Trump to save thee. You're both so bad. Worst duo we ever had. Now the world's gone mad. Cause you're so bad. Wow, that was amazing. That was wow, that was per what a tribute to uh what a tribute to Tom Petty and the Heartbreak. A fantastic job with that. Eight five five nine four oh mark as our number or if you'd like you can send us an open mic message like that dude did and uh, a bunch of other folks too just download one of our katriot radio station uh network uh, radio ne uh, katriot network radio station mobile apps send us an open mic message we'll get it on tony is in kingsland georgia today tony hello happy whatever you want wednesday what's up um yes so i am calling about abortion you're calling about and... abortion okay <laughs> yes so I know it's a hot topic, and I am Republican. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I can't say that I am conservative because of um, my thoughts on it. I don't believe it's right, um, but I guess that's the but. Um, I have to say that um, I've had, like, a conversation with my doctor mm -hmm that um you know he he is a conservative and um we spoke about it and you know it's the same thing as like with the guns you know when you really come down to what would you actually do in that moment and it's like you know the guns you would fight you, you would fight and you, they're not going to take away your guns but the same thing with the women like you know yes it's wrong it's killing a baby but are you going to force a woman that doesn't want to have a baby? Are you going to tie her down for nine months and make her have that baby? And then if you do that, what is the side effects on her mental health? And yes, it is killing a baby. And that is so wrong. And I understand that. And I'm against it. But we also got to think about this woman that is an adult in her mental health and what's going to happen to her. So I was just wondering about what your thoughts were on that, because when I was talking to him about that, yeah. he just didn't seem to understand what I was trying to say. And he kind of seemed like he was okay with that. And that was kind of like, um, it just seemed very wrong to me okay. at the same time. So, and it goes over to, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just curious. I'm trying to get a, I'm just trying to get a, a grasp on it because you said you're a, you're a Republican, but you're not conservative because of your thoughts on this. But then you told me your thoughts were that abortion is not right and you believe it's killing a baby, but you, what you believe it should still be a right for women that want that, does that uh, decision. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh. I don't think it's right. And okay. And, you know, and for me personally, I've never had one. Right. I would never have one. Right. And, you know, and I would always vote against it. Right. And in my mind, this is my thought process. But, you know. Um, oh, so it was your so doctor like said, like that, who said this yeah. to you. Oh, I see. Well, I'll tell you. And just from the from the little that we've spoken, there's there's a bunch of flaws there's a bunch of flaws in the argument, and I don't know if it's coming from your doctor or really anyone else you talk to. If you say, look, I'm against abortion, and they say to you, well, what about guns? You're for the right to have a gun. Why can't a woman have a right to an abortion? Guns and abortions are the total, they're the polar opposite. You have a gun to protect your life. You have a gun to protect the life of your family. I have guns to protect the lives of my children, and you do that to protect them from bad people. Uh, an abortion is not protecting you from bad people. It's protecting you from a baby, a baby that you created. It's protecting you from having that family. It's a real bad, I mean, to, to quote, to quote uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre, it's a ridiculous, um, it's a ridiculous uh, comparison because they're two totally different things. Guns protect lives. Abortions take them. So you can shut that argument down uh, pretty well. The, a couple of other things I heard you say was that, you know, when abortion ties a woman down for nine months, it doesn't really. It ties them down forever. Uh, if you, if you uh, outlaw abortion or if a woman can't have an abortion, it's not just the nine months that she's pregnant. 
if she keeps that baby, there's at least 18 years that she's legally responsible for it. And for a lot of folks, it's a lot longer. But it's not the abortion or the lack of an abortion that's tying her down. It's her actions pre-abortion that have that have tied her down. It's her thought process to uh, thought process towards sex and abstinence, or in this case, the abstinence of abstinence that has tied her down. And if you stop uh, looking at it as tying down, if you look at it as something miraculous, something exciting, something that is life changing, I mean, there's a lot of people out there who never expected to get pregnant and kept their children. It's like Mary. You know, people always say to me. Uh, I, you know, I'll see people that are engaged forever. I'll go, when are you getting married? And the woman says something like, well, you know, he's waiting for the right time. And I go, when is the right time? When is the right time to get married? They're like, well, he wants to make more money. He wants to buy a house. He wants to get settled. And then when we, you know, then when we're all, when we're in a good place, then we'll get married. That's not what marriage is. Marriage is deciding you love somebody and getting to the good place together. Marriage isn't waiting for the perfect time. Marriage is getting married and then working toward whatever your perfect outcome for your life happens to be. You don't wait for it. If you do, you're, you're going to put it off forever. The same is true with pregnancy. If you become pregnant, that's the time you were supposed to become pregnant. And it may not be the most convenient in your mind. It may not be the most optimum for your career, whatever. But that's when you're pregnant. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's a lot like, hey, just realizing you can get through everything. It's not being tied down. And the last thing I, I think I heard you say was make her have a baby. Same thing. Nobody makes you have a baby. You know, I didn't. nobody, nobody says, hey, you have to have this baby. If you don't want to have a baby, don't do the things that make babies. You know, I don't want, uh, I don't want, let's see, what I don't want to get chafed so I don't jog in the heat, right? No, if I, if I jog in the heat and, you know, or anywhere, I'm going to get chafed. I'm going to get sweaty. My leg, my fat on my legs are going to rub together and I'm going to come home. It's going to be burning and it's going to be, and I may, and I'll be like, oh my God, I'm so debilitated. I can't believe I'm chafed. Somebody made me get chafed. Nobody made me get chafed. I'm the one that went out like an idiot and ran in the heat. Another reason why I don't exercise. So these are not, abortion is not keeping a woman uh, down. An abortion is not a right that you're taking away. An abortion is a way to protect a life, much like the right to bear arms is uh, there to protect lives. They're actually more similar than they are uh, than they are different. And the other thing is, this whole decision from the Supreme Court didn't even get rid of the right by for a woman to have an abortion. You could have an abortion all over the place. You can have still have an abortion here in Florida before 15 weeks. You can have abor an abortion, I believe, in Texas before uh, six weeks. I don't know. I'll double check on that. Sure, there are states where you can't have an abortion whatsoever, but half of the states you can. And if you are telling me that, uh, that having a baby is going to ruin your life, if you're telling me that you live in, what's the state, Indiana? I think that's one of them. If you live in Indiana and having a baby is going to ruin your life, and ruin your career, and you cannot let somebody tie you down with a baby. You cannot let the man make you have a baby. You've got to get rid of that baby or your life is over. You're telling me you, you can't drive to Illinois? You can't drive one state over, take care of beeswax, and then come on home and live the rest of your baby-free life? There's a lot of excuses. Uh, you know, this is just, this decision was not getting rid of a woman's right to choose. It was giving the states their right to choose back, which was taken away from them wrongly uh, in the 70s. Um, anyway, I hope that cleared it up. Hey, thanks so much for calling. We really, uh, we really appreciate it. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Craig is in San Jose, California. Craig, clear your throat. You're on, buddy. What's up this whatever you want Wednesday? Mark, really glad to talk to you guys. Thanks for the show. I've never heard anything like it, and I love it. Wow, well, um, thank you. <laughs> mate, you're welcome. Look, I just real quick, Trump said, let's all march peacefully to protest. Yeah. And label an, insura in, an insurrectionist. Now, if I heard you properly earlier, you said someone in the Dems said, if we lose, possible civil war. Now, I see that as seed planting. Um, and will they be held accountable for saying that if something does happen? That's a great question. That's a great question and even even a much better segue. Uh, and I thank you for that, uh, Craig. Kathy Griffin was her name. Kathy Griffin is a comedian or was a comedian. I don't think she's I don't think she's very funny anymore. I don't even know if she does 
I don't even know if she still does stand up, but she, um, you may remember her famously. She had a show called My Life on the D List, which a lot of people thought was just, uh, it just thought it was just a self deprecating humor, but no, it was factually accurate. She was on the D list, if that, um, in the celebrity hierarchy. And she does these comedy shows and she would do all these specials and she kind of had this, you know, dark sense of humor. And a few years back, when Donald Trump was president, she did a photo shoot. I forget the magazine or I forget the pictorial where it appeared for the first time, but she held up a severed Donald Trump head covered in blood, not his actual head. Just, you know, just to make that clear, before the fact checkers say she did not show, hold up Donald Trump's actual head. No, it was not his actual head. It was a make-believe Donald Trump head. She was holding it as if she'd cut it off and there was blood running all down as she was wearing like a blue dress, stoic look on her face. Don't even really realize or remember what it was for, but it caused her massive issues uh, financially, professionally. Her career took a huge, massive hit. She was labeled a uh, traitor. She was uh, getting death threats. I mean, it was terrible for her, terrible. She went away. I believe she suffered depression. Um, the only recourse apparently was massive amounts of plastic surgery because she got, again, I thought that at first she was getting so much plastic surgery, she was trying to hide her identity so that nobody would know who she was when she walked up. But apparently it was just like a thing for her. It made her feel better. I guess. Um, and so that was what she did for years. Finally, she crawled back up out of her hovel and said, I'm back and I'm going to do comedy specials again. And I think she went back out there. I want to say she guest hosted on some TV show. Maybe I'm not even really sure. She wrote a book and she, she kind of picked herself up like the Phoenix to rise again. Now, as I assume she's fallen back down into obscurity because I haven't heard about her in a while, but yesterday, Everything that had happened had been has been resurrected. All of that angst, all of that turmoil, all of that those problems that Kathy Griffin suffered from and then later profited from uh, came back to haunt her because she tweeted the following. If you don't want a civil war, vote for Democrats in November. If you don't want civil war, if you do want civil war, let me read that again. If you don't want a civil war, vote for Democrats in November. If you do want civil war, vote Republican. Now, the way any literate person would read this, the way anyone from like third grade on reads this is as a threat. If you don't want a civil war, vote for Democrats in November. This is the same way a kidnapper would write, if you ever want to see your child again, give me this much money, unmarked, don't bring the police. Or somebody puts a gun to your head and says, if you want to live to see tomorrow, hand over XYZ item. It's the same thing. If you don't want a civil war, vote for Democrats. She's holding a gun to America's head and saying, if Democrats don't win, in November, there will be a civil war. If Democrats don't win in November, all hell's going to break loose. If Democrats don't win in November, we're going to get vicious and violent and angry. That's the way anyone would read it. If you do want civil war, vote Republican. Okay, so I go vote Republican and all of a sudden you're going to attack me. You're going to declare war on me because you didn't get your way. It's a threat. It's a threat of violence and it's still on Twitter. It was tweeted over 24 hours ago, 1.21 p.m., September the 6th, 2022, and it is still on Twitter. Her account has not been locked. She has not been censored. She has not been suppressed. She has not been canceled. Her tweet saying, if you don't vote for Democrats, there will be civil war, is still on Twitter. Apparently hasn't violated a single one of their terms of service. Now, she's been getting a lot of angry replies. She's been all over the news. She's been backtracking, as have her supporters saying, silly Republicans, that's not what she's saying. What she's saying is that if Republicans win, they're going to start a civil war, which is the dumbest thing ever. If the Republicans win, there would be no need for them to start a civil war. You don't win and then say, we won. Now we're going to go to war with you because we're in control. It doesn't make work that way. You can't say if you want civil war, vote for Republicans because they're going to start one. When the Republicans win, everything else, you won't have to worry about civil war anymore. It's, uh, it's a weak argument from some weak-minded individuals. But again, what do you expect? What do you expect from the left? And this has been a problem because this comes right on the tail of Bielsa Biden's speech in Philadelphia, marking half, half of this country as enemies of the state. 
at, as dangerous to the republic. What he has done is he has set this up for all Democrats to now openly attack Republicans because the president of the United States has said that MAGA Republicans, Trump supporters, people in red states, people with red hats, people who w vote and support Donald Trump are a threat to democracy. They're a threat to the republic. They are dangerous, violent people. They must be stopped. The soul of the nation, for crying out loud, that's the name of the speech, the soul of the, it's a battle for the soul of the nation. It's us versus them, and them is the Republicans. And so Kathy Griffin goes, great. The president has basically given me the green light to declare a civil war if Republicans win. And now Twitter is allowing it to happen live. And I imagine she's just the first one, not the last one. In fact, The View was back yesterday, and they started to say some stuff which was borderline uh, calling for civil war as well. And I'll play you those clips here in just a minute. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Quick break. More Mark K. Show next. So, I, think, I think Hannah did poison me. <laughs> so was she a comedian? Because I never found her funny. Um, she was a comedian. But, again, you know, comedy is in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, a lot of people think my jokes are very funny. Some people, <coughs> Karen, do not <laughs> find my jokes funny. A lot of times I'll make a joke in here that I think is hilarious. But sometimes Hannah will just look at me and go, okay. You know, so again, comedy is, it's all relative. Some people will pay big money to go see Kathy Griffin or Rosie O'Donnell. I don't even know who the liberal comedians are anymore. Other people will be like that. I wouldn't be caught dead. Yeah. So it's all, it's all relative. It's cut. You know what? It's a lot like, it's a lot like investments. Some people swear by paper investments, bonds, stock. They believe that investing in major corporations, fortune 500 corporations is the way to go. Um, they believe that until, of course, there's a recession like the one we're in, and they watch all of their hard-earned savings go right down the toilet uh, next to Kathy Griffin's career. But then there's other people who invest in something a little more stable, something like gold, something like silver, something like platinum, something like a precious metal. And they do it with a respected and reliable company like Birch Gold Group, which is available now at birchgold.com slash mark. Uh, Hannah, since you're not doing anything today... Do me a favor. Go ahead and put birchgold.com slash mark in all of our chat boxes so that people can easily access this free 2020 information kit uh, and, uh, and get their hands on everything they need to know about investing in gold. Gold IRAs, for example, gold 401ks. Uh, this is, this is the, the newfangled way to invest your money, and it's a lot safer. Like Ben Shapiro, good. Ben Shapiro is a big fan of Birch Gold Group. Like this show, good. We're big fans of Birch Gold Group and um, and precious metals. If you think about it, a gold for I mean for eons has been what people are 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 drawn to because gold has never lost value. Money loses value. You don't believe me? I got I got some Confederate currency in a binder at home that's worth basically nothing. Uh, you know, those, those Chuck E. Cheese coins you get are, are worth more than some people's, some people's portfolios. Uh, but gold and silver, platinum, precious metals, they never, ever, ever lose their value. That's why uh, Birch Gold Group is a great way to invest your money and protect your assets because you want, always want to cover your assets. And birchgold.com slash mark will allow you uh, to do just that. Cover your assets with Birch Gold. That should be their motto. That should be their motto. Uh, Hannah, did you do anything that I asked you to with the thing? Is it there? Hannah are, you, Hannah, are you still there? Hannah, did you leave? I think Hannah left. Hannah. Hannah, Hannah if you're there, pin birchgold.com slash mark. Oh, Jay Bose did it. Thank you, Jay Bose. Hannah did it, too. Oh, did she? Yeah, on she Facebook did, and Rumble. Facebook. She, can't, she can't pin on YouTube. But she can pin on Facebook. She did. She did not. Yeah, I I'm saw literally it. staring at it. It's I'm looking there. right there. Pinned comment. It's right there. Let me reload. <laughs> she did it like a minute ago. No, it says, bet you can't send me stars. Oh, down there? Yeah. Never mind. Uh-oh. What? I'm on the air. forget that we're on a delay? What do you mean we're on a delay? Like, you are 30 seconds ahead of me, so I text you and I respond. I think I'm, I think I'm more than 30 seconds ahead of you. 
Okay, did you pin it to the Facebook? I didn't pin it. You want me to pin it? Hannah, pin, why do I hear ringing in the background? That was you. Oh, because oh, it's in the stream now. I get it. Yeah, can you pin it, please, on the Facebook? Is there like a yeah, delay or something? And pin it on YouTube, too. I can't pin on YouTube. Okay, just pin it there. Okay. <laughs> we're on a delay? <laughs> yeah, okay, fine, so we're on a delay. Big whoop. You want to fight about it? Oh, look. It's pinned. It pinned. Alan says that that is an old man ringtone for sure. That's the uh, that's the FaceTime thing. Hmm. <laughs> Remote Hannah is just the same as in-person Hannah. It's so funny. Got 10 seconds. Hannah, I have those same stools, by the way, in black. I guess mine are more chairs. Show. My name is Mark K. 855 Mark is our number. 855-940-6275. Thanks so much for joining us today, folks. We really appreciate it, man. What a whatever you want Wednesday we've been having so far. What a whatever you want. All this stuff's been going on. We've been getting tons of phone calls, open mic messages. If you haven't left yours yet, go ahead and do it now. Oh, my God. I almost forgot about her. Hi, Karen. Happy whatever you want Wednesday. What's on your mind? Well, I watched the Mark K show today. Oh. And I kept watching it. Yeah. And watching it. Yeah. And boy, did it make me sick. <laughs> I had to run to the bathroom and oh, keep no. my guts out because Mark K is so disgusting oh. that he has to have poop coming out of his mouth oh. and call off me, me bag, just like Joe Biden does. Wait, what? And all he does is word vomit. Oh. He's obsessed with Biden. That's the only person he talks about. Well, I mean, he is the president of the United States, and he is one of the uh, he is one of the big reasons we have all this. And I hate to Karen. Thanks so much for the call. We really, we really did. She just say I have poop coming out of my mouth, just like Joe Biden. Is she turning? Oh, what happened? Maybe we're maybe we're finally getting through to her. Finally, maybe all of this obs obsessive, uh, you know, watching of our show and analyzing everything we say is finally cracking through that thick skull of hers, and she's realizing yes, Joe Biden is full of poop. The poop toilet is full. Wow. If we can turn Karen. Man, oh, we could turn anybody. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Quick break. Your phone call. We got a whole hour of whatever you want Wednesday next. Don't go anywhere. I agree, Michelle R.D. Karen is obsessed with Mark. Who's Greta? Greta. I don't know. Oh. Barking orders. No. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Anna, I feel like I haven't seen you in a week. It's been that long, hasn't it? Just about. What was it? It was Thursday we saw her, right? Mm -hmm. And Friday. Right. Right. <laughs> Brenna says, I love how she claims to hate you so much, but if she wasn't banned on Facebook... She'd have a top fan badge for Mark K. <laughs> top fan. Top 
stop band badge. Here's my face. <laughs> What's going on here? I don't know. Are we supposed to replace the video fit with this? What's going on here, folks? Also, I thought that was your middle finger at first. <laughs> it's not. It's your index. We could Photoshop that, though, to look like your middle finger. Hey, B. Crespin. <laughs> <laughs> well, Photoshop help. He has help. Aaron Sharp wants to know, do you have a P.O. box if we want to send presents to the show? We do. We have the Catriot Outpost, November Foxtrot. And if you go to our Locals page, I'll go pin it right now. Go to Locals. I'm sorry. Go to markk.locals.com, markk.locals.com, and you can uh, you can see it there, I think. Let me go pin it again. Um, so it's up near the top. The address to the Catriot Outpost is there, and that's where we receive all of our mail now because we are no longer allowed uh, to receive mail where we actually are. So we have to get in the four-wheel drive uh, Humvee, ride through the desert and the forest and the and the candy cane forest <laughs> through the Lincoln Tunnel <laughs> to uh, the Empire State Building and, and to go to Catriot Outpost, November Fox Drive. B. Crespin said he's on it. Thank you, B. Crespin. Oh, do you mean to send you the photo? I'll put it in the Discord. Where the hell is it? Oh, no. I want all. Is it an article? What the hell would it be? Um, well, I can't find it, but it's somewhere. Oh, here it is. Got it. I'm pinning it. Pin. All right, Catriot Outpost, November Foxtrot address is pinned in our locals group. If you would like to send us any presents, treats, uh, contraband, uh, ammo, anything at all, Catriot Outpost, November Foxtrot is ready to receive. Uh, so if you go there now, it'll be the third down. And... Uh, Don't send it to Catriot HQ. Send it to Catriot Outpost November Fox Drive. Oh, sweet. Mm. Aaron wanted to know because she wants to send me a new shirt. A new shirt? Yeah. What's wrong with my old shirt? Nothing. Oh, okay. How dare you earn a G? Tell me to burn this shirt. <sighs> Karen, Karen Fromm says, when I hear Karen's voice, I picture the old lady that played Mama from Throw Mama from the Train. Oh, yeah. Mama Fratelli. Yeah. What was his name? 
Owen. Wasn't it Owen? Oh, yeah. Owen. Yeah. <laughs> she was also in the Goonies. Mm -hmm. Mama Fratelli. Yeah, Mama Fratelli. That's right. And uh, My Son Hunter came out today. Oh, is that today? Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to watch that. Speaking of the Goonies. Didn't I buy I bought that, I think, right? hot it is outside probably damn yeah i know uh i know they were talking about 100 degrees at lunchtime and here we go we're entertaining meets informative this show makes the listener feel like it's my show you make bad news sound good mark k for three hours a day love it this is the Marque Show. This is the Marque Show. Mike, Alpha, Romeo, Kilo, Kilo, Alpha, Yankee, Echo, 855-940-MARK uh, Mark is our number. 855-940-6275. It was my own special secret code. If you know what it means, don't tell anybody. Uh, listen, we've been we've been just inundated with fantastic phone calls about all kinds of things today because today is whatever you want Wednesday. Every other day of the week, we we are meticulously plan and plot every moment of the show. We have just just lines and lines of information information that we need to share with you we have every minute just perfectly perfectly timed out for accuracy and entertainment value and information and enlightenment but on wednesday we basically do jack you know what <laughs> for a couple hours uh, we get in here we turn on the microphones we answer the phone and we see what's on your mind 855-940-MARK is our number this is uh, ron he's in wagner oklahoma he's listening on krmg hey ron how are you Oh, uh, I'm peachy. How about you? Doing swell, man. Thanks so much for asking. What's on your mind, sir? What'd you want to say? Uh, I got a soft spot in my heart for veterans because I am one. Yeah, we do too. It took, uh, it took uh, the U.S. government 20 years to let me know that I was exposed to Agent Orange in Vietnam. Yeah. And now that I am have filed uh, claims for different uh, different things that have manifested themselves as a result of that, uh, I'm current. I, I am coming up on 425 days before I get a response. Hmm. They're undermanned. They're undertrained. And after a whole series of wars after Vietnam, the layers of veterans that needed special assistance are just stacking and stacking and stacking. Mm -hmm. But m the message that I'm trying to convey is is that we are the lowest of the low as far as the Democrats go. Trump tried to do something about the veterans. And everything just kind of fell apart, I guess. However, anybody that walks across or crawls across the border is completely taken care of. And uh, Biden took the time to hire 87,000 more IRS to the tune of I don't know how many millions of dollars. And I want all the veterans, past, present, and if they're even thinking about it, I want them to remember what they heard today because they will not be taken care of if they have uh, any needs due to what uh, they did during the service. We're, we're the only ones among that group that I named that actually have skin in the game, Ron. and we're not being taken care of. And I tell you what, Biden, that woman that said she wanted to run to the bathroom, after, every time I hear Biden's name, I have a, to fight a gag reflex yeah. <laughs> because he is anti-American. And, and the whole Democratic Party will find everything else to spend our money on except for the people that earned it. Yeah, Ron, that's a, what, very well said, and we appreciate the call. And, of course, we do appreciate your service, and we're sorry to hear about your 425 days without a response from the government. But everything else you said is 100% true. It's $80 billion, by the way. $80 billion is what those 87,000 IRS agents are going to cost, and that's enough money to hire veterans – this is a fun fact. A uh, one of our favorite sheriffs here in Florida put out a um, put out an infographic that if you take the money they're using to hire eighty seven thousand IRS agents, you could put an armed police officer, former veteran, security official, full time in every single school in America. Every elementary school, every middle school, every high school could have an armed guard, a police officer, or some kind of security pro uh, professional 
full time in their school and you would still have something ridiculous like like two million dollars left over to spend on whatever else it is that you want. You could hire more veterans affairs officers to go into the VA hospitals. But the problem, the fact is that 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 doesn't make the government any money. The government is all or the Democrats are all about making money. And the only way they can, quote unquote, make money is by hiring people to go into your bank account and find the money that they believe that you owe them. Not the money you owe them, the money they believe that you owe them. And that's where their priorities lie. You're 100 percent right. They are not hiring Border Patrol agents to keep illegal immigrants from coming across the border with covid, with other diseases, with drug cartels, with uh, you know trafficking, with coyotes, with trucks full of illegal immigrants who end up dead on the side of the road in Texas because of the unbearable heat and the horrible conditions. They don't care about any of those people. They're not using the money to pay for Border Patrol or Veterans uh, VA. They're not using the money to protect our schools. They always talk about fortifying the schools. How? Taking away your guns. How is taking away your guns going to fortify the schools if the schools are still wide open with no security personnel on site? Clearly, they've got money to spend. They're not spending it. And, and you're right. Anybody who's ever served in the military, anyone who's currently serving in the military, anyone who's thinking about serving in the military, although with Joe Biden and the Democrats in charge, that number is that number is shrinking. And that's a sad state of affairs. Uh, we need we need gung ho, courageous, brave, patriotic people who will go and fight for this country. We need young people who love America and who are excited about the idea of protecting her at all costs. And we don't have those anymore. Not nearly as many as we did. If you look at recruitment, recruitment is down. Is it because young people don't love America? Maybe. The Democrats will tell you not to love America. They'll tell you that America is a bad place, that it's broken, that America is racist. Why would you want to fight for something that the Democrats keep telling you is so horrible? You probably think to yourself, I'm not going to give my life for something terrible like that. Well, I, wanna, I would have fought for the America that Donald Trump said was great, the America of freedom and liberty and rights and values and religion and God and country and brotherhood and, and, and economic prosperity. And that would have been an America to fight for. But Joe Biden's America, Joe Biden's America is terrible. Why would I want to lay down my life for that? And you can see it in the recruitment numbers. Down 50% since Joe Biden took office. Down 50% recruitment means our military is suffering. It's getting smaller. People are not standing up and saying, me, I will put my, I will protect you. Me, I will do the job of protecting the United States of America from our enemies, uh, foreign and domestic. Me, I will do that. They don't want to do it because their president's up there saying, first of all, half the people in this country suck eggs. Half the people in this country are terrorists. Uh, and the other, I mean, if you were president, think about the damage that, uh, that Joe Biden's speech in Philadelphia has done to our national security. Joe Biden gets up on his on his throne of demons. He gets up in his in his altar of hatred, also known as Independence Hall, and he stands there for 30 minutes and he talks about how half of the country are terrorists, extremists, white supremacists. All words he used to describe Republican voters. That's 75 million people. Do you think that those people are going to run down to the recruitment office when they're 18 and say, "Hey, I want to go serve under the command of that guy who called me an extremist, a racist, uh, a, a threat to our republic, and a white supremacist. Think about the military men and women who are serving now, who voted for Donald Trump, who support Donald Trump, who still support Donald Trump. Think about the people who are in Afghanistan. Well, he took everyone out of Afghanistan except for the American citizens left behind. But think about the military that have to go all over this world in the blink of an eye, listening to their commander-in-chief say, you, the person wearing the flag on your sleeve, the person who has sworn an oath to protect us, the person who is, is training every single day using your skill and your talent and your intelligence to protect this nation from some of the most dastardly people in the world, instead of saluting them and saying, thank you so much for your service, he looks at them and says, you are a problem for this country. You're a threat to our democracy, and you are, you are breaking the soul of this nation in half. I mean, I don't know if you can court-martial the president of the United States because he's not really enlisted, but he is the commander-in-chief. And I feel like just having him up there spewing that kind of hatred, I mean, that really is, a, that affects our national security. That seems to me to be an impeachable offense. But again, what do I know? 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Sharon's in Liberty Hills, Texas. Hello, Sharon. How are you? 
I'm doing good, thank you. I've never been to Liberty Hills, Texas, but it really sounds like a cool place. It is a pretty cool place. It's kind of close to Georgetown. It's about 35 minutes northwest of Austin. Oh, I, I could probably do it in 29. Anyway, what's on your mind, Sharon? What did you want to say today? Uh, I, I Like you said, I live in Liberty Hill. I used to live in Garden Grove, California, and I got the hell out of there because of gruesome newsome and the rules and the regulations that they have there, and I'm living a much better life here. And, boy, I'll tell you all the things you're talking about. Right now, it, I, I take offense to Biden saying what he said about Republicans because that's one of that's me, yep. and that's a lot of other people. Where in uh, where in California were you? Um, Garden Grove. It's kind of close by um, Huntington Beach, and it's in Orange County. Okay, all right. Yeah. So you're near Los Angeles, basically. Pretty close. Yeah. Okay. And how long ago did you move? Um, we moved here May first. Oh, so very recently. Oh. Oh, I retired, wow. and two, two, three months later, we moved. Man, that's amazing. And, you know, and that's a common tale. I bet you're not, you know, you know probably a lot of people in Texas that have done the same thing. California continues to be not just, um, not just the one of the, the biggest, I mean, it's really one of the saddest tales of the United States of America because it was at one time the golden state. Uh, it was at one time the place, you know, it was La La Land. It was the place where dreams came true. And it drew a lot of people out west, not just the gold. I'm not just talking about the 49ers. I'm not just talking about Hollywood. But there's a lot. I mean, the vineyards, the wine country, San Francisco, the industry. It's right there on the Atlantic Ocean. Easy access to Japan and trade routes to China. I mean, it is. it was one of the prime pieces of our of our great nation. And it has just fallen into such disrepair because of the bad leadership, as you pointed out, uh, Gavin Newsom and others, that it is a place where now people find themselves leaving ASAP. As soon as they humanly can get out of there, they get out of there. And the problem is nobody's making it any better. In fact, they're doing the, this whole, they just passed, I don't know if you heard about this, but they just passed a week ago or two weeks ago, they announced they were going to outlaw gas guzzling vehicles. No more cars. They're going to outlaw the sale of uh, gas vehicles in California. So if you live in California in the next few years, handful of years, you'll be forced to only purchase an electric car because it will be illegal for you to purchase a car that runs on uh, gasoline or fossil fuels. I imagine there are going to be several court cases to battle that, but that's the, that's the plan. Not one week later, they had to call an emergency. That's no, it's no laughing matter. They had to call an emergency because their electrical grids were going to fail. There were going to be rolling power outages. They urged people to not charge their electric vehicles unless absolutely freaking necessary. They're out there today. Eric Swalwell, is, who made fun of Texas, by the way, just six months ago, is out there tweeting, guys, cool your home during the day, crank your thermostats up at night. We've got to get through this together. Can you imagine a state as populated as California, the most populated state we have, a state as vast. Uh, you know, you've got San Francisco and L.A. and you've got San Diego. I mean, tons of millions and millions and millions of people in that state all buying electric cars and the grid they have, the electric, uh, the electric system they have right now can't even sustain air conditioning in August. It's all but due to mismanagement from the top down. And it's chasing people like Sharon to Texas and Oklahoma and Tennessee and, yes, here in Florida, too. Uh, hey, thanks so much for your call. We appreciate it. And thank you so much for listening to the show. 855-940-MARK is our number. Tim is in Ohio. Hey, Tim, how are you? Hey, I'm doing pretty good today, Mark. Oh, good. Hey, um, you, know, I, you, you know I listen to your show. as uh, I'm a loyal listener, and I've called in and uh, uh, won some swag from you. From oh, this is Tim from Lima, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, Tim? How you doing? Good to talk to you again. All right. Well, hey, you know, I, I, I like to wear your swag uh, when I'm uh, driving around town. It's actually made me some friends. Oh, good. Uh, for instance, uh, like the, there's this guy, Mark, that um, I kind of I, I call him a co-worker because we both do the same type of job. But right. we became friends because of your shirt. Oh. Now, now, um, I uh, the other night, well, last week, uh, uh, there's a radio show here called uh, The Evening Edge with, with uh, Todd Holes. Yeah. And uh, he was giving away tickets for Eric Clapton, and I managed to get a hold of a couple. So I uh, just want to let you know, I, I can't wait to wear your shirt while I'm at the uh, uh, show tomorrow night. And I uh, can't wait to to uh, meet other people 
that um, approached me because of your shirt. Wait a minute. So you're I just wanted to give you a plug there. You're going what? to wear – so you won Eric Clapton tickets on the uh, on Todd Holtz with the Evening Edge, and you're going to go yes. see Eric Clapton wearing the Mark K. Show shirt. Yes, sir. That's fantastic. Yeah, let me know how that goes over. <laughs> let, me, let me know how that goes I, over. I, I, I'll, I'll bring my passport, too. I'm yeah, sure I'll, some people will want to check that oh, out. That is great. Yeah, and uh, how do you like Todd up there? Uh, I love Todd Holst. He's a, he has an amazing show. Um, I'm a loyal listener to him as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every night's something new. So uh, I love Todd and I love his show. No, he's got a great he's got a great show. The WHO is a fantastic station, and uh, and I'm glad you're enjoying it. And, Tim, thanks so much for the call, and thanks for being uh, such a loyal listener to this show, too. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-MARK. Got to take a break. More of your calls coming up next. Stay tuned. La 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 Hannah's still here, everybody. Yay, Hannah. Hannah, Hannah, she's our man. If she can't do it, no one can. Hannah, you'll hear that in 30 seconds because there's a delay. Can't believe how quickly today's show went. feel bad there's this guy that keeps calling me um and it's just so staticky when i pick up the phone oh no so sorry i thought we got i thought that wasn't a problem anymore no it's still a problem oh okay good sorry uh, we're just not getting the uh the pauses in the phone calls it's, yeah it's still the static every now and then hmm is it, let me ask you this, how much better is whatever you want Wednesday with all the extra lines? It's much better. Oh, okay, good. What do you think? I love it. I mean, I, there's much more variety. We get to get to more people. It um, seems like it's smooth. La 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 Oh my TikTok's gone by the way. That's good. So, line, oh, what? Line six is interesting. Line six. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. Mm -mm. Uh, that's interesting. What's line one? I don't know. He wanted to talk to you about the, the game. The game? Yeah. Oh, okay. And everybody keeps uh, reminding me. It is whatever you want Wednesday. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. No, that's 
Yeah. 100%. That's proof positive right there. What you want to talk about? I want to talk about horseshoes. All right. <clears throat> I like a good game of horseshoes. But not those plastic ones that you get at, like, Target. I like the real... The real horseshoe. Real horseshoe, real pit. You know, the real uh, thing. I don't I, I guess I don't know if they're real horseshoes, but they're metal. Yeah. I mean, you could throw one at me and I would think it's a real horseshoe. Yeah. I would never throw a horseshoe at you, Jay. Well, thank you. I mean, I guess never say never. <laughs> 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 Odds are I would never throw a horseshoe at you. Once I threw a stapler at Hannah, but she was, uh, she was wearing a... Was it a red, um, what is the one that's in, uh, office space? Swing line? Yeah. Was it a red swing line? Probably. Or a black one. And we're back. Oh. <clears throat> This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940-MARK is our number to, to prove to you that we really mean whatever you want Wednesday. When we say whatever you want Wednesday, Mark is in Castleberry, Florida. Mark, thanks so much for calling the Mark K Show. What is it you wanted to discuss today? Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Oh. I'm a great fan, and I love your show. Well, thank you. I appreciate that so much. What's on your mind, sir? What do you want to say? Well, I take it I'm the first caller to ever talk about horseshoes because Jake had a little snicker when I talked to him. I said, I want to talk about horseshoes. Horseshoe. Now, when you say you want to talk about horseshoes, are you talking about what goes on the horse's foot or the game or both, I guess? The the game of horseshoes. Yeah. Uh, I, didn't know if you, I didn't know if you guys knew there were state tournaments and world tournaments. Oh, yeah. No, I'm familiar. Horseshoes are very – I haven't played in a long time, but I remember when I was a kid growing up in North Carolina, there were – horseshoes was very popular at camp – or at barbecues yep. and uh, church back, you know, events and things like that. Right. Yeah, they uh, all the different cities around Florida has them, like uh, Orlando, Vita, Beverly Hills, Clearwater, Melbourne. They, we all go about every Saturday. It just started up last weekend. Oh wow! And you and yeah. you just compete at a horseshoe at these horseshoe pits or these horseshoe uh, arenas just for fun, or is there money involved? What's the uh, what are the stakes? Oh, it, no, there's money involved. Uh, you pay like twenty dollars to, to enter. Okay. And uh, they keep your stats and everything on the computer. And you can go to the uh, Florida State Horseshoe Pitchers Association and check out your stats and everything. And you'll have a percentage. You'll play the people close to your percentage. If they're not close to you, then they'll give you a handicap. All right, great. But we have but we have uh, children play. We have males, females, and uh, yeah. it's a great time. And we're, we're, uh, we have elders classes. And I don't know if you're uh, familiar with Walter Ray Williams Jr., the bowler. I'm not, but uh, yeah, yeah he, no, but he plays too. Yeah, he. Oh, he's the. Uh, he's like a six-time world champion. Oh, of horseshoes. And he also plays horseshoes, and he plays left-handed and right-handed. He can flip it. He can turn it. He's just an incredible pitcher. Oh wow, he's like the uh, he's like the Harlem Globetrotters of horseshoes. Exactly, and he's actually uh, he he won our state tournament last year, and he beat me. He skunked me, matter of fact. He threw eighty-two percent against me. Yeah, wow, eighty-two percent. Now, when you play horseshoes, <laughs> it's uh. Oh, we got to go? All right, hang on one second, Mark. We'll continue this in a minute. <laughs> I ran out of time. I was really into it. <laughs> Guys, you want to play horseshoes? Now, horseshoes, as I recall, is you... Uh, have to get closest to the pin, and if you ring the pin, you get like you get a point. Isn't it a point for? It's like a point if you hit the pin, two points if you ring the pin, or something. I guess I don't know. I have to. Or I get the official. I forget. It's been a long time since I played. Horseshoe, Florida was a horseshoes. Rules. The rules of horseshoe pitching. Uh, a coin is tossed to decide who starts, and thereafter the player to pitch first alternates with the end. Throwers must be underarm, which is like this. Um, the first player throws both horseshoes at the opposite stake, one after the other. The second player then does the same thing. The score for the end is then calculated, and the players play the next end by reversing direction. Any horseshoe that completely surrounds the stake is called a ringer and scores three points unless canceled out by an opponent's ringer. If there is some doubt as to whether or not a horseshoe qualifies as a ringer, 
A straight edge should be placed against the open end of the horse shoe. If straight edge doesn't touch the stake, a ringer is scored. For such a simple game, the scoring can seem complicated because of the way the ringers are canceled out. To de-simplify this, the various options are okay. If no ringers are thrown, the nearest horseshoe to the stake counts one point. If both players throw a single ringer each, the ringers are canceled out, and the nearest of the other two horseshoes scores the point. Should both players score two ringers each, they cancel each other out, and no points are scored. If one player manages one ringer, but the other player pitches two ringers, three points are scored. If a single ringer has been scored, that player wins three points plus an extra point if that player's other horseshoe is the closest of the remaining three. Finally, if a player achieves two ringers and the other player manages none, six points are scored. So there you go. Pretty simple. However, if you're really good, it could take for friggin' ever. That's the problem. All right, I'll be right back. I'll get some water. I'll hold oh, it wait. down. Oh, wait, I'll get a water. I'll get a, I'll get a liquid death. There you go. By the way, I gra it's so funny because my son... Oh, there's a bunch of meat in there. My son had a golf tournament yesterday, and uh, I needed a water, and so I grabbed one of these out of the fridge, and I get to the golf tournament, you know, and they're teeing off. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm like this. And, like, everyone looks around, and I guarantee 90% of the parents thought I was, like, chugging a, a schlitz <laughs> while, while I'm watching the kids' high school golf tournament. And I was just like, meh, let them think it. I'm just walking around like, hey, what's up? Hit him, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Hannah. You are, you are too much. I threw the staple. Wait, what happened? <laughs> I just heard my upstairs neighbors doing it. I am scared. Doing what? Oh, doing it? <laughs> Wait, it's like 2.30. <laughs> should we talk about this now or should we save it until tomorrow? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. All right. Hannah, hang, hang on for a FaceTime. I'm going to grab a meat stick. There's some meat. <laughs> oh, there's not that many meat. That's oh, awesome. Wait, <clears throat> this is gonna be funny. <laughs> They're adventurous. They probably thought that you were at work. Yeah, really. They're like, we know she's gone from twelve to three. <laughs> Brenna says, who doesn't like a little afternoon delight? Obviously, Hannah, if she's banging a broom on the <laughs> Coco Dominki says, nooner. Mm. Or 2.30-er. That's an impressive nooner if it's still going on. <laughs> yes. It's Hannah's neighbors, whatever you want Wednesday. They, too, are grabbing a meat stick. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Uh-oh. What happened? I just got a community guidelines violation on my TikTok. Oh, no. Karen must have complained. Well, she did leave another open mic saying she was going to report you. That's okay. I appealed it. My appeals have been going really well, knock on wood. Good.
And we're coming back in five seconds. Hey, Siri, FaceTime Hannah. Yik. Making a FaceTime call to Hannah. Gick. Where entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Love it! This is the Marque Show. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275 is our number. And it's whatever you want Wednesday today. We have to interrupt for a second because Hannah, as you know, is at home with some kind of mystery illness. She was sick yesterday. She was in the ER. Uh, they cracked her open. They found nothing really significantly wrong with her except that she needs to eat more bananas. So they sent her on her way and said, drink some water and, you know, stop bothering us. Uh, but she's still recovering today, still feeling it. So she's under the weather. So she's at home today. Hannah, are you there? I'm here, I'm here. Uh, she's been communicating with us, though, not only on our multiple uh, live streams, but also via text message. And we just got a text message. Uh, it said, oh, my God, my upstairs neighbors are doing it. I'm scared. What exactly did you mean they were? What were they doing? Uh, the marital things that two people do. Oh, they were, like, doing it, doing it. Like, doing it, doing it. And And you could hear them? Well, you know, it is whatever you want Wednesday. And I, <laughs> what did you do when you heard? Did you call him and say, hey, I can hear you? No, I tapped a broom on the ceiling like a 90-year-old woman. <laughs> you tapped him there. I'm crying and I'm trying to sleep. You tapped a broom? I didn't know people did that outside of, like, Three's company. I didn't know that was an actual thing. Yeah, I absolutely did. And did they stop? You know what it is? First of all, you're such a killjoy. Second of all, um, yeah. you know, that's maybe, maybe they thought you were at work because they know you're usually gone from noon to three, and maybe that's their safe time to do whatever they want. I mean, probably. That's interesting. Have you ever heard or experienced this before? Yeah, one other time. Uh, I actually believe it was the last time I was sick. Oh, see? So this is a regular thing for them. They know that the, the <laughs> when they hear... When they hear the Mark K show come on, they're loving it. They're like, it's time, baby. It's time. She's going to be gone for three hours. Huh. That is, uh, all right, well, listen, are they are they doing it now, or did, were you able to stop them? No, it, it's quiet. You can hear a pin drop. All right, well, listen, if it happens again, call us back and hold the phone up to the ceiling. Ew, no, that's not this kind of show. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, well, maybe we'll do it during a commercial. Okay, all right, so are you are you still scared? Or are you gonna, What were you scared of, by the way? I meant to put scarred, but I put scared. Oh, okay, they're, they're very similar. They're just... Typo. There's one letter off. All right, listen, are, do you how are you feeling today? Uh, I feel a lot better. My fever broke this morning. Okay, uh, what are the odds that you come back tomorrow? 99%. Okay, listen, here's what I want you to do. What? I want you to go upstairs later today and no. leave, leave a note on your neighbor's door and write, I'll be back at work tomorrow, so have at it. So proceed with your normal yeah. schedule. Don't worry, I will not bang on the ceiling while you're banging on the. Well, never mind. Uh, hey, listen, we'll hopefully, we'll hopefully, we'll hopefully see you tomorrow, man. And for anyone who called me an old curmudgeon for yelling at my kid's friend for parking on my lawn, Hannah, who's supposedly 27 years old, just started slamming on the ceiling with a broomstick to get her neighbors to quit doing the hanky panky. So let's make sure we understand uh, who really who really is the old curmudgeon here. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. This is uh, Jefferson in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Jefferson. How are you? I'm good, Mark. How are you, sir? Oh, doing really well. Thanks so much for asking. What's on your mind, Jefferson? What did you want to say? Well, first I want to say uh, I used to listen to Rush all the time, and and you are a very refreshing difference. And a wonderful show. Well, and thank you. I really appreciate listening to it. Well, Jefferson, I, I appreciate that. We always tell people, yeah, we could, you know, we couldn't, no one could ever take his place. Uh, but we try to, Absolutely. you know, we, we try to entertain his audience and people that are like minded in our own uh, special way. So I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's printing with you and I'm glad you enjoy it. And thanks so much for calling in. What's on your mind today? Um, I have a question for you because yeah. I don't understand. Okay. Um, yeah, we all know about the whole, mar-a-lago thing and the raid and mm. the taking boxes and all that jazz but um who's to say that they're not like just jamming whatever they want in boxes and going oh he had this in there oh he had that in there i don't understand how everybody can just 
go along with the fact that whatever's in the box is actually what was in the box and you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I you know what I've often said this before myself and this is where the special master really is going to come into play. Uh, the special master is going to be able to look at all the documents because they're going to have special clearance, and they're going to be able to say these are good documents, these are bad documents. They're going to be able to say these are documents that are inadmissible because they're they're private matters. These are um, these are documents that uh, you know have attorney-client privilege or or executive privilege between the president and his underlings. They're going to be able to filter out all of the stuff and say these are the documents that may be troublesome. However, the problem then in court is proving that those were the actual documents in the boxes and nobody can prove that because nobody can take a picture of it in fact they laid out photos of alleged documents that were top secret but they covered them with pieces of paper saying these documents are top secret so how do we know whether i mean it's it's really an interesting it's going to be a very interesting case should it ever come to court should there ever be an indictment and i don't believe that there's irrefutable evidence or evidence beyond the shadow of a doubt because look at all the doubt that donald trump has already cast on this but first of all he said i called the doj and i said come and get what you want they searched they knew where everything was they looked at the boxes they've been in touch with my attorneys clearly there's no obstruction if you're working with the organization who's saying you're obstructing justice the second thing is that he claims he's already unclassified all these are declassified these are not classified documents anymore. I'm the president. And from what we've learned, there's no real substantial way to verify that. He said in front of Cash Patel and a bunch of other people, I'm un, I'm un, uh, classifying everything, um, but there's no official record of it. Does there need to be? This is going to be a battle as to what actually causes a document to de be disclassified. Is it as simple as the president just waving his hand over it and speaking the magic words? A lot of people say, yes, it is. And the uh, DOJ is going to have to defend their their position that no, it's not. And then, of course, what were, was actually found there? Typically, when you have evidence at the scene, what they do is they, they say, hey, here's the evidence we found at the scene. We've labeled it exhibit this. We've labeled it exhibit that. And even if it goes to a grand jury or a jury or any other kind of trial, even if it goes in front of a judge, you're talking about classified documents that nobody's supposed to be able to see. Every exhibit you have in your court case is not going to be something you can show to anybody in the court. And that's going to be really troublesome uh, for the DOJ. And I think they know that. And I think Donald Trump does as well. And that's why it seems like he's not slowing down for 2024. He's ramping up. Hey, thanks so much for the call, Jefferson. And thanks so much for the nice words. We definitely appreciate that, too. 855-940-MARK is our number. Jordan is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hey, Jordan, how are you? Thanks for calling the Marquee Show. What's up? I'm pretty good. Hey, I uh, just wanted to bring up the um, what Biden said the other day in uh, Wisconsin about um, the MAGA Republicans in Congress are coming for your Social Security. They're coming for your Social Security. That's his big threat. Yeah, that's how he threatens the uh, the elderly. I would like to mention with that too is they keep on bring he keeps on bringing up the MAGA Republicans like we're just some extremists and. And it's not just the um, the MAGA Republicans. It's really just anyone who disagrees with their ideology. Correct. Uh, I'm carrying myself, and I kind of feel like I might be labeled as a, uh, an extremist to them. Well, if you're listening uh, to this show, they've already got a file on you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. No. Uh, you know, like the Social Security issue, it's an empty threat. It's a threat they've been using forever, and it doesn't work. Um, the other thing is, you know, they can say, oh, Republicans are coming for your Social Security. Yeah, well, guess what? The Democrats just hired 87,000 IRS agents. What are they coming for? Am I going to have any money left over? So also Social Security, a lot of people believe, is is already a doomsday principle. You know, will the Social Security be there when I even retire? If I ever retire, will I be able to retire? How much is there already? There's already limited benefits coming through. Uh, it, it's one of those things that they it's a threat that they like to use against you that they have no proof of. It's a threat they like to use against you when it, it, it's kind of like school vouchers. They say that they're trying to take away your child's education. They're not. They're trying to give you a choice. And that's what they hate. Democrats hate choice. They don't want people to be able to choose where to send their kids to school. Pardon me. They don't want parents to be able to choose if their kids are being taught about gender uh, re-identification or transgenderism or homosexuality in their schools. They don't want you to have that choice. They just want you to send your kid to school and forget about it. And if your school sucks, well, it's probably your fault. 
Uh, you can't take the money that you pay in taxes and go give it to some hoity-toity uh, private school with a voucher. That's un-American. Same thing is true with Social Security. They want you to believe that this is the money you get, this is the money you're entitled to, and if you don't want it or if you want to invest it elsewhere, sorry, you can't do that. Odds are you're not going to invest it wisely. You're going to put it in some kind of cryptocurrency scam or you're going to get it taken away and then you're going to be old and you're not going to have any money and you're going to be a drain on the, uh, on the country. They don't trust you with your own children. They don't trust you with your own money. They don't trust you with your own retirement. They don't trust you with anything. They only, that's why they want to take it all away from you. And they don't trust you with guns, that's for damn sure. That's why they want to take it all away from you and control every aspect of your life. That's what it's all about. And so if Republicans are the Social Security boogeyman who are trying to take away your Social Security benefits, they're trying to eke out some votes from the upper echelon of the, of the, uh, of the um, you know, chronological age bracket so that they can stay in power uh, long enough to, well, steal more of your Social Security money. Hey, thanks. So, ironically, thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. This is Rhonda in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hey, Rhonda, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing fine, Mark. I just wanted to say just a couple of things. One thing is I heard Oz said that he would have certified 2020. I don't, I, is he trying to lose the election or what? Because I don't heard think you heard Dr. Oz say he's try he would have uh, certified 2020. Yeah. Well, he's trying to he's running in a blue state and he's trying to not seem like an extreme conservative. Uh, also, I don't think he is. <laughs> so, you know, he, maybe he's, he's probably just telling the truth. But yeah, anyway. Um, anyway, what else? What was your second point? Well, then, then I also heard Fox News attack Trump today and said that they speculate he sold documents to Russia. Who said that? Fox News. Who said that on Fox News? I don't know. It just said, I got it from Newsmax, and it said one of their hosts speculates he sold documents to Russia. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. A lot of things are gone. I'll, I'll have to check on that, and I'll, uh, I'll get on Newsmax right away. Hey, thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. Look, there's been a lot of back and forth, a lot of animosity lately between Donald Trump and the folks over at Fox News. There's a lot of people that uh, are, are on the side of the DOJ or are not necessarily looking at both sides of the coin. When it comes to um, when you know, when it comes to this particular issue, but that's what look. Whenever we talk to Brian Kilmeade about it, because my uh, my number one question for him is Geraldo Rivera, why? But he always says Fox News doesn't dictate the hosts' opinions. Fox News allows hosts on the same network to have very different opinions. That's why Brian Kilmeade may have a different opinion from Steve Ducey. That's why Peter Ducey may have a different opi opinion from Steve Ducey. That's why Hannity and Tucker Carlson, they may all have different opinions um, from some of the other hosts that you hear, from the Juan Williamses and the Geraldo Rivera's. And apparently, according to Brian Kilmeade, that's the way the folks at Fox want it. Uh, by the way, speaking of Tucker Carlson, I don't know if you heard about this, but Jennifer Lawrence, uh, apparently she did an interview. I forget where it was. But Jennifer Lawrence said... <laughs> That she, from the Hunger Games, by the way, she said that she had a nightmare. She has nightmares about Tucker Carlson. I'm trying to find the actual, oh, here it is. It's in Newsweek. Jennifer Lawrence admits to having nightmares about Tucker Carlson. In her cover interview for Vogue's October issue, she made it plain that she is no longer has patience for those. Who, uh, she said, she, wait a minute. Oh, Jennifer Lawrence has never been one to hold her tongue. And in her cover interview for Vogue's October issue, she made it plain that she no longer has patience for those who do. Quote, I can't F with people who aren't political anymore. You live in the United States of America. You have to be political. It's too dire. Politics are killing people. In the interview, Jennifer Lawrence, who originally hails from Kentucky and used to identify as a Republican, revealed that the increasingly fractured state of the country has put a strain on her relationship with her parents. I just worked so hard in the last five years to forgive my dad and my family and try to understand, Lawrence said, about their differing political views. It's different. The information they are getting is different. Their life is different. I've tried to get over it, and I really can't. I can't. She told the reporter that she's had recurring nightmares about Fox News host Tucker Carlson, which she talks to her therapist about. She still mourns Hillary Clinton's presidential loss in 2016 to Donald Trump, especially in the wake of Roe. 
it breaks my heart because America had the choice between a woman and a dangerous, dangerous jar of mayonnaise. I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, and they were like, well, we can't have a woman. Let's go with the jar of mayonnaise. I don't want to disparage my family, but I know that a lot of people are in a similar position with their families. How could you raise a daughter from birth and believe that she doesn't deserve equality? How? So that is uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Very, very troubling admission that she's having nightmares that she speaks to her therapist about. With Tucker Carlson, listen, if you're having nightmares about Tucker Carlson, you probably need to find a new therapist. That's all I'm saying. 855-940-MARK is our number. We have to take another quick break. We will be right back. More whatever you want Wednesday. The final segment continues right after this. Hmm. Oh. Look at that. What happened? I won my appeal with TikTok in like 20 minutes. Oh, boom. That was quick. I wish they would let you know who reported you. Yeah. Hannah, don't forget, I need to see that extensive log right after the show. Yeah, so we can knock the minute out. We can knock the minute out. Anybody here a minute, by the way? Anybody got a good minute? We should probably let everybody on the stream know about the minute. That way they can help us. Looks like Hannah's saying, imagine having nightmares about a talk show host. Oh, that what I just did? Yeah. That means she hasn't been taking the log at all. <laughs> that's, that's what I was that thinking. That literally means, uh, I'm like, Hannah, what's the best part of the show? Uh, 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 you, the thing about Jennifer Lawrence that you just talked about. Come on. <laughs> Although, she's not wrong. That would be a good minute. Because there's a big punchline. Mm -mm -mm. Meat sticks and liquid death. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Mm. What'd you do? Kelly said, stop sharing meat sticks, Jay. Oh, are they not for sharing? <laughs> he didn't really share. I just walked over and took them. Yeah, that's true. Oh, no. So Wait. many pages. How many pages? I don't know. See, this is why we have you take the look. Mark's ego gives me nightmares. My, I have no ego. What are you talking about? Tucker refuses Jennifer as a love interest in her dreams. Well, I just got a notification from ByteBart. Oh, what's it say? My, My son, son Hunter, Hunter is available now. I got it right here. I'm excited. Pardon me. I may have to take a break from succession to watch it. Oh, whoa. What? Four pages? Four pages? Come on. Now you're just... <laughs> Overachiever. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody's going to read four pages. <laughs> it's not graded. <laughs> you better redact some of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like the redacted log, please. Kelly says, Mark's ego is very large. Just ask baby. Kelly, who said that? <laughs> Kelly Johnson? Yeah. I thought we were friends. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. I wanted to watch my son Hunter, but Casey doesn't want to. 
Um, I saw Casey yesterday. I was a little jealous of his overalls. Just tell him that you run this biatch. I'm going to get more overalls. He had like uh, these beige ones. They were really nice. But they were, I know they were like his work overalls. Mm -hmm. But they look cool. But also he's like a stick. I probably wouldn't look like that in overalls. I'd look more like a... Not a stick. Whoa, April's being good? Hmm. Ah, that's why. Because Rachel took April's pot and hit it. Casey said that it didn't look very fun, re referring to my son Hunter, and get some overalls. They're great. So many pockets. That's all. This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940. Mark is our number. Mark is in St. Augustine, Florida. He's checked in on WOKV. Hello, Mark. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Mark. Good to hear your voice, and uh, I love the show. Oh, well, thank you so much. Real quick, Mark, what's on your mind this whatever you on Wednesday? What did you want to say? Well, you know, I'm involved in all the distractions just like everybody else, mm -hmm. but uh, it kind of hit my heart a little bit. My wife's having surgery soon. Uh, we didn't realize this, and uh, nobody wants to talk about it that much. The blood bank that she would be getting her blood bank from, it's an aorta surgery, okay. uh, has vaccinated and unvaccinated blood, and it's a crapshoot on what you're going to get. We've since opened up an account, and, and we're filling it up with the order that the doctors wanted, but had we not had a clue, had we not been doing our research and all that stuff, she would have had a vaccination, and anything that's involved with any problems with that would have certainly hampered and been a waste of the operation. Wait a minute. So you're saying that your wife is getting an operation and that the blood bank has uh, vaccinated blood and unvaccinated blood. They know the difference, but unless you specify, you could get either or. No. Well, not, it, they, they're they taking both, and they're not separating it. They, oh, I'm see. not sure that they know one is and one isn't, but... What they do know is they're both in there, and whatever bag you get, that's what you get. So how are you procuring your own unvaccinated blood? Well, we had to prove to them that, one, any of the problems with the vaccine could be a super problem for my wife. Right. And the other thing was is then we had to go to the blood bank, make our case with them. Then we had it was a two-week process. But we're now almost there. Surgery's on the 13th. We're almost there. We're going to make it. Wow. But is that like a – is, is it an family. allergy or something that would cause your wife like anaphylactic shock or something? Well, no. Her – she has a dissecting aorta. Oh, okay. And any clotting or any yeah. other type of problem would certainly – end her life oh mark well listen we are praying for you and your wife and that's something wow i didn't even think about that but you're surely that is definitely something that uh that a lot of people are just realizing uh thanks to your phone call listen we got to get out of here we'll be back tomorrow for uh well thursday show <laughs> what is tomorrow oh yeah it's thursday thirsty thursday <laughs> uh, guys don't forget it's national beer lovers day um, and thank you for all your help today. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for all the support. Thank you, Hannah, for the extensive log. Uh, 